pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, the indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. In accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and broadcast live over the Lunenburg Public Access channel on Facebook Live on the Public Access Facebook page and will be uploaded to the Lunenburg Access YouTube channel within 24 hours after the conclusion of the meeting. If you would like to participate in tonight's meeting remotely, uh, you can do so using the Zoom application on your smartphone, tablet, or computer. Tonight's webinar ID is 909-174-0347. If you Recording would like to, in progress. Sorry. If you would like to participate, uh, but don't have one of those smart devices, but have access to a phone, you can call 888-475-4499. Uh, again, with webinar ID 909-174-0347. The posted agenda lists all the topics which may be discussed at the meeting and are those reasonably anticipated by the chair. Votes may be taken as a result of these discussions. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by the open meeting law. Do I have any public comment from the board this evening? Yes. Mr. Jeffries. Good evening. On Thursday, there's a public hearing with the Architectural Preservation District regarding our application to demolish the old primary school at 30 School Street. I will not participate in that hearing and I offer comments about what I perceive to be uh, unethical and unacceptable behaviors by certain appointed members of the committee. I'm asking my colleagues to consider the following concerns and act on them. Our government structure provides the select board with the responsibility of appointing members to some boards, such as the Zoning Board of Appeals, Conservation Commission, <coughs> and the APDC. And it's expected for the select board to, at times, submit applications as the town and appear before those boards. Every member of every municipal board or committee should vigorously perform their duties and provide the same level of inquiry to all applicants, regardless of who they are. A public hearing should be just that. Um, but here's what actually happened, and it's outrageous. Several years ago, the town made the decision to create an architectural preservation district in the center of our town and created an, a new process requiring those with property in the district to get the guidance and consent of a new committee the APDC, to ensure that their exterior modifications remain as visually similar to their condition as of the passing the bylaws possible. And so to ensure that the process is expedient, it required quite specifically for the APDC to conduct a public hearing within 45 days of receiving an application and issue a determination within 70 days. So on October the 27th, the select board submitted an application to the APDC to demolish the old primary school. Interestingly, one week later, on November the 4th, a uh, Facebook page titled Lunenburg Architectural Preservation Committee was created. In November and December, there were two posts and both, both posts were about the old Methodist church. On December the 15th, 49 days after submitting the application, the APDC advised the select board that we filled out the wrong form. 49 days later. So on December the 30th, we submitted the correct form. And on January the 9th, the APDC posted a copy of that application to demolish the old primary school on Facebook and noted that the application hasn't been accepted. On January the 9th, the APDC also posted to their Facebook page a picture of the old primary school with the statement, the old primary school has been badly neglected since it was vacated in 2005. It is the APDC's opinion that the town should restore and preserve the building. On January the 11th, the APDC's Facebook page posted a photo of a classroom in the old primary school with a caption that noted that the APDC, quote, the APDC would rather see the building sold or leased to a private developer and that could restore it. On January the 13th, the APDC posted a photo of the old primary school with a caption, quote, don't let this building be demolished. And then on January the 31st, 32 days after submitting the application and weeks after publicly advocating against the application, the APDC informed the select board that our application was incomplete. 
On February the 8th, at a meeting of the Select Board, we extended an invitation to the APDC to meet with us, and this was communicated to the APDC on February the 9th, and on February the 10th, the APDC declined our invitation in an email that essentially said, there's nothing to discuss. And then the next day, on February the 11th, 43 days after submitting the application, the APDC changed their mind and determined that the application was accepted, and they scheduled a public hearing for March the 10th which is 71 days after submitting the second application and 136 days after submitting the first. We can all disagree on solutions and results, and as I say often, reasonable people disagree. Differing opinions and individual talents offered for the public good make us better. But we all have to agree on the ground rules. Our bylaws are our ground rules, and our rules say a public hearing by the APDC must be held within 45 days not 71 days, and certainly not 136 days later. So what happens when boards don't follow timelines? They constructively grant approvals. The APDC effectively approved the town's application to demolish the old primary school when they failed to meet the requirements of our bylaw and hold a public hearing within 45 days. No one has to deduce or assume what the APDC's opinions and reflections are about the application we submitted. They've already told us, and everyone else, which is antithetical to the purpose of a fair and impartial public hearing. This is overreach and, obst and obstruction, plain and simple. And I have a hard time accepting that if we were proposing to do something that the APDC supported, it would take 71 or 136 days to even get to a public hearing. If this series of events happened to a private citizen, and if that private citizen sued the town, I would not expect this board to waste taxpayer dollars defending what is overtly wrong. Right is right and wrong is wrong, and the appearance of wrongdoing, which is hard to deny here, is the same as actually doing something wrong. We all have to hold ourselves to the highest standards. So in my view, certain members of the APDC egregiously disqualify themselves from being able to fairly and impartially execute the duties of their office and should be excluded from being appointed to positions of trust in the future. It would have been okay for the APDC to hold a public hearing and then deny the application. That is completely fine. But weaponizing process through delays and inaction and then publicly advocating as a town agent against an application submitted to them is a serious dereliction of duty and none of this should be ignored. Thank you. Any other public comment from the board? <clears throat> Not at this time. Uh, my only public comment uh, as we talk about things local to Lunenburg, I want to zoom out just for a moment and at least acknowledge uh, the global situation. And I, I wear tonight the colors of the flag of Ukraine in support of the people there who are undergoing, you know, just unbelievable conditions and unspeakable horrific acts against them uh, in their fight for their own sovereignty and their freedom. Um, we all see it sometimes real time, but certainly actual pictures uh, from all different kinds of media. I can't imagine the situation that they're in. And I do support what you know the United States and NATO has done and the rest of the world has done so far. I don't know how, like anybody, I had no idea how it plays out, but I do stand with them in support of their fight for their own self-rule, their own sovereignty, and their own democracy. And I can only hope that uh, they can prevail in this and that we would, under certain circumstances or this equivalent circumstances, do the same thing and act with such incredible bravery in light of the the war crimes being done to them in many places. So I just want to acknowledge that. And, and if there is uh, a way, we, we, people have reached out, uh, if there were ways for us to acknowledge that in some kind of showing, uh, if there's anybody out there who has ideas about how we can show our support, even if it's just lighting town hall in blue and yellow, if somebody has that capability, please let us know. We did have somebody ask if we could fly the flag and we did look at protocol and it's against flagpole protocol to put two flags on the same pole and we don't have two poles to put another one on next to it so that's kind of out right now but if there are any other ways that people have in the community 
to show our support. That would be, uh, although only a symbolic act, I hope people are looking out to uh, donate to humanitarian causes that were going there. But even that show of support will be helpful uh, and send a message to people all across the globe. So just wanted to say that. Any public comment from the public? Okay, any announcements? Uh, there is um, the Marshall Park landscape conceptual presentation on March 16th. Yes, next Wednesday. Yeah. Yes, and um, our parks commissioners that are present tonight will, I'm sure, also advocate people trying to attend that meeting. And the town caucus is Monday the 14th at the middle school middle school high school auditorium and the annual town meeting warrant closes on March 21st at 4 p.m. And as Mr. Jeffries just noted there, the APDC's hearing about the demolition request of the primary school, primary school on 30 School Street is being held this Thursday at 7.30 at the Ritter Building. 705, a joint appointment with the Parks Commission for an application to fill a vacancy with Patrick Hickey, is that, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yep. Right. Uh, of 136 Highland Street until the next annual town election. Uh, Mr. Hickey, if you would come up here and introduce yourself and just say a little bit about yourself and why you want to be on the Parks Commission, please. Um, hi, I'm Pat Hickey. Um, as you know, I live at 136 Highland Street. I've been in town for uh, Permanently for 31 years. Uh, I was a member of the fire department up until last year for 30 years. Um, I resigned due to, I just didn't have the time to put in. Um, my roots have been here since the 1800s. My family has been here, they own Cook Farm. So anybody that knows Cook Farm, um, I've been here. My roots have been here. Um, I, uh, I work for the town of Maynard as a firefighter. Um, I have uh, married with three kids. I have a 16 year old who's a sophomore at the high school and two 12 year olds. Um, so last year, um, my two boys love hockey. That's all we do. 13 months a year is play hockey. Um, <laughs> so uh, I have a small lot, so they wanted to get together and put up a rank. Well, there's not really much room. So I said, well, Marshall Pond is right down the street. Why don't we start doing that? So last year we opened up Marshall Pond um, to skating and um, I met Anna who was on the Parks Commission. Um, she came out skating one day, we were out there. Um, my neighbor, Chris Sullivan, um, was, uh, was talking to me and everybody was all excited about the, the skating. You know, you just talk to the neighbors and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe we were out here listening. You know, just outside, we hear the skating, this is great. Um, so then I've been talking with Chris and he started talking about the, the, the new project that they want to do and um, when this um, vacancy happened, uh, he looked right to me. I'm like, this is awesome. This seems like a, a great project that um, the town really needs. You know, a lot of the amenities that they're trying to put into the park, um, the center of town really needs. Um, so that's really, really why, I, you know, I just, I just want to keep the parks the way they should be and w the way they always have been. Excellent. Uh, you've so, met, so aside from Anna, who actually talked to you, you've met with the parks department? Yeah, I've been to the past two meetings. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I've mm -hmm. talked to uh, the chairman um, last week, <laughs> or the last meeting. And so, yeah, I've met everybody that's on. And I know Dave from the fire department years ago. <laughs> so, yes, I know. I actually just, I, and I'm drawing a blank on the chairman's name right now. Karen? Um, Karen Menard? Yes. I, I, I've i never actually met her in person because our the past two meetings have been in Zoom, but sure. um, but I've met the rest of the commission. Excellent. Well, this is a joint appointment between the Parks Commission and the Board of Selectmen, so I should probably give the opportunity. Is, is Does the Park Commission, do you have a quorum or not tonight? We do. Okay, so I'll let you call your meeting to order first. <laughs> and Heather, the 617 number, I believe, is Anna on the, uh, if you want to unmute Anna, too. Okay. Uh, so it is uh, 715. I'll call the Parks Commission meeting to order. 
I do a roll call of attendance. Uh, Dave? Here. Anna? I can see your phone number. Can you unmute Anna, please? I asked her to. Oh. Mm -hmm. She's on the a phone, so she... Do we know what it's it is? Is it star six or something? I think it's star nine. Star nine, I think, raises your hand. Mm -hmm. There she is goes. Go right. ahead, Anna. Uh, hi. Yeah. Here. I'm on the phone. I don't believe Karen's here. I think she was otherwise obligated tonight. If you was going to try to call in, uh, you may see another phone line come in in the next minute or two. Uh, that, that is our meeting open. Okay. We have had Dave at our last couple of meetings. All right, so I will open it up to my board and ask if anybody has any questions for, for Mr. Hickey. I don't. I just thank you, Mr. Hickey, for coming forward. Uh, anyone who steps forward for town service, uh, it's very much appreciated, and uh, I fully support his uh, nomination. I want to definitely echo uh, the thanks for stepping forward. We, we, uh, we always like people to step forward. Too few do. Uh, I just, my, my question for everybody, not for you in particular, is always just that you'll be able to, uh, even though you have ideas about what you want to happen, that you'll be able to execute the position with impartiality and uh, be able to uh, hear all uh, uh, ideas and, and, and sides of issues impartially and in a in balanced way. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Thank you. My only question is because this is, uh, as it says, an appointment only until the next town election, which is in just a couple months. Is it your intention to run? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, I would open it up to Mr. Sullivan to your board, to your commission, if anybody has any questions. Uh, I don't. We talked with, with Pat at our last meeting a little bit. Uh, yeah. I have one question I'd like to pose. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Yeah, Passios. Dave Passios, 56 Whiting Street, and a member of uh, the Parks Commission. Uh, Pat, I'm wondering, you know, on your uh, talent bank form and your introduction this evening, you spoke specifically about Marshall Pond and Marshall Park. Um, and, and this isn't a, a, a negative or a positive in my mind. I just would like to ask you as to what your knowledge is of the charge of the Parks Commission um, as it pertains to Mass General Law and the uh, charter of the town of Lunenburg, uh, Marshall Park and, and the pond are a very small piece of uh, our charge. Well, regarding to the charter, um, I'm not, I don't know a lot about it. Um, I do know that they're in charge of um, all the ball fields and all the parks in town. Um, and, um, but. I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I, I won't try, I, I have no idea regarding the parks and the general law and the, um, the charter. It, it wasn't, the question wasn't meant to call you out, Pat. No, no, uh, I, I didn't think, think so, so Dave. I've known, I've known <laughs> for years, and not everybody reads the charter until they get all the town government, and then you learn to uh, learn certain sections of the charter so you don't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, or say the wrong thing without the background knowledge of the charter. Um, it's just important to realize that, uh, you know, there, there is a lot more to uh, creating policy for the properties that we have con uh, under our care and custody um, and a number of other things that uh, going forward you'll learn as we go along. Any other questions from the Park Commission? <clears throat> I was remiss. Um, hi, yep. I just go ahead, Anna. I, I was, this is Anna. This is Anna Lockwood. So, Pat, I very much look forward to working with you. Um, I know what they said that uh, having some information about the charter and what we're charged with is important. Um, I also find to be very important uh, being open for discussions and to new ideas and work together as a group. Um, and I will love. I love your enthusiasm for the, the town pond, pond and uh, Marshall Park, and I'm hoping that you can bring that same level of enthusiasm to every other 
parks that we have in town. And knowing you a little bit, I think you will. So I appreciate it, and I just want to say thank you for volunteering. Thank you. Okay, so before we take for a vote, I, I should have echoed my colleagues here in thanking you for coming forward, but also thanking you for 30 years on the fire department too. So thank you for that as well. So continued service to the town is much appreciated. All right, I would entertain a motion regarding the appointment of uh, Patrick Hakey to the Parks Commission, uh, term to expire uh, uh, until, I don't know the exact date on the second, the third Saturday in May of this year, uh, but I'll just say the third Saturday in May and uh, make a motion. I move to approve the appointment of Patrick Hakey to the Parks Commission, uh, term to expire uh, the third Saturday in May after the annual town election. Second. Second. Okay, let's do a roll call. All those in favor, Mr. Jeffries. Aye. Mr. Franco. Aye. <coughs> Todd. Aye. <laughs> I'll let uh, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, aye. Did. Aye. Anna. Aye. And an aye for myself. That would be, unless my math is off, that's unanimous. So uh, thank you. You should go to the town clerk's office to get sworn in at your earliest convenience, but certainly okay. before your next meeting. Uh, and good luck on the Parks Commission. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Seven ten. <laughs> Do I need to close? I think I need yes, to Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, Chris. Uh, please close your uh, meeting. Like Do I have a motion to uh, close <laughs> the uh, Park Commission meeting at 10, or sorry, 723? So moved. Is there a second? Second. I'll uh, do a roll call vote, Dave. Aye. Anna. Aye. And I for myself, we are closed at 723. Thank you all for right. having us. Thank you. Thanks to all the members of the Parks Commission. 710, we have a poll petition hearing. Actually, we have three poll petition hearings in a row. So uh, the first one is for Lancaster Avenue, Plan 72-L, dated February 2nd, 2022. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. John Good evening. Kimball, Unitel. So for the first poll petition, Lancaster Ave Goodrich, that's going to be for a support poll for poll 97 that's directly across the street. That's the purpose of that one. It's just purely going to be a 35-foot poll and going to run a guy wire to support that poll. Uh, directly across the street? On Goodrich. Okay. Okay. Okay, and there should be a plan attached. Is there a plan attached? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's the third page. That's what I was missing. Okay. And so this is not in the... F the new poll is on the west westerly side. or the easterly side of Lancaster. It's 97-1 is the one you're adding? 97-1, correct. Okay. Easily. Okay. Uh, doesn't like anything's in the way. Anybody have any questions about this poll placement? Yes. You do, Mr. Jeffries. What's the, um, what's, I understand what you said the purpose of it is. Um, why can't that just be achieved by replacing the existing poll? Be, because of the strain that's going to be put on that pole um, from 97 to, I believe it's pole 17, we're, uh, we're, we're looking to upgrade the wires, and it's going to be heavier wire, and it's going to put a strain on that pole. It, it is a newer pole. It's to keep that pole from actually coming onto Goodrich. Okay. There's, um, I think my only question here is really the this corner lot as I recall usually has like a, a seasonal farm stand right there in that corner every year I just want to make sure we're talking about the same Lancaster Ave yeah 991 
I Am I looking at this correctly? Or I think, I think it's on the other side of the street. Side. I think it's on the other diagonal corner of the street. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Eight, where it says 828, yeah. I yep. think that's where it is. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm oriented okay. south, and I'm, this is oriented north, so I get it. Okay, sorry. All right, thank you. No other questions. I just have a clarifying question. Uh, 97 1, um, I'm assuming. You said there's going to be a guide wire. Is there going to be a guide wire coming from 97.1 to 97? Yes. Are there also going to be guide wires extending away from the pole? Correct. Yes, they're going to be coming down. Correct. Right. So do they stay within the right of way? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, the location of the guide wires would be helpful if uh, if you're going to use guide wires on a pole to show where the the guys uh, in, uh, contact the ground. Yep. Okay. Yep. I agree. Thank you for showing driveways. Yeah. Cool. Um, my name's Keith Carabo. I work with John. I'm the manager of electric operations for yeah. Unitil. I know many of you. Um, so I, if I give you a quick overview why we're doing this on a couple, we have three different pull petitions. It's all tied to one project. We're looking to do a reliability project to cut our, our exposure of our circuit in half out of, out of Lunenburg. Right now, up here through this area is fed one way. We get a motor vehicle accident, we have something go wrong, we've got one feed. What we're proposing is to build another feed down Lemonster Road, which is already a current poles. We're gonna build in our Hendrix construction, our, our bundled wires, it's not open, it's a tighter construction. And what it's doing, it's going down, taking a left on Kilburn, over to um, Goodrich Street, out to um, uh, Lancaster. And then coming up towards the city, up to the city, the town up this way, we're going to be making an open spot um, on that line. So if anything ever happens on either side, we're only, we, it loses half the customers. Right now we have 2,000 customers on that circuit. And if something happens, we lose all 2,000 until we can do other things. By doing this project, we pick up four other ways of feeding the town. We're always looking at ways to sure. help our ability. And um, through, through this area, um, this is the best way. We've been studying this for years, our best way to help our, you know, our customer countdown when things do happen. Good. So that's the idea of, of you know why we're here for these few polls. Yep. I just wanted to kind of give the highlight on that. Resiliency is good. Yes, sir. Yes. Can I ask? Yes. Uh, will there be additional poll petitions related to that project beyond no, these three? Okay, this is, this is all of them. There was a total of uh, four new polls, uh, five, six new polls, two stub yeah. polls, and four polls on Kilburn that we'll discuss. That's all of them. Okay. So thank you. <clears throat> uh, any other questions about this? And I would entertain a motion regarding the request for the additional poll of 97-1 uh, as a uh, support poll with guy wires. I move, I move to approve the requested poll petition for Lancaster Ave, Plan 972-L, dated February the 2nd, 2022. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right. Off to a good start. <laughs> Kilburn Street at Goodrich Street, Plan 970L, dated February 2nd, 2022. So this is very similar to the last one. It's uh, proposed poll 41-1. It's also to support for poll 4. Currently, there's a uh, tree guy wire. There's a guy wire going to a tree that we would like to remove and put a stub pole in to support that corner pole number four instead of having a guy wire into a tree. Okay, I'm just looking at where this one is added. So the one that's added is 4-1-1? Yes, directly across from four. Okay. It's the other one. Oh. I wonder why I can't find it. Top. Okay, got it. Uh, any questions about this this one? No. I'm assuming the same thing that Mr. Dwyer asked before. This is the guy wires are going to be on the right of way. That's correct. Okay. Okay, if there are no questions, I would entertain a motion regarding the... Uh, uh, I'm gonna ask one. Yes. Um, this corner lot, as we, not the corner lot. I'm looking at this incorrectly. I, I think I see what I'm looking at. They're going to add this. Yep. yep. I was looking for this. Yep. 
Got it. Thank you. Okay, I entertain a motion regarding the poll petition at Kilburn Street at Goodrich Street, uh, uh, which is Plan 970-L. I move to approve the poll petition uh, at Kilburn and Goodrich Street, Plan dated 970-L, dated February the 2nd, 2022. I have a second. Second. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. And last but not least, I can talk to Kilburn you. Street itself, Plan 971-L, dated February 2nd, 2022. So um, as part of our project is, part of coming down Lemons to the Road, it's a single-phase primary right now. We're going to build that out to three-phase in the bundle of construction, so it'll look much like it does. For us to get over on the other side onto um, Lancaster Ave, the means that we, we chose, and it was for reasons, was um, to come down Kilburn Street. The first 1,000 feet of Kilburn Street until you get to that really hard corner, there's currently, there's no utility poles located on there. For us to build that circuit tie, we need to fill in 1,000 feet of open space. <clears throat> so what we're proposing is to, every 200 feet, is to place a uh, utility pole, so that'll put us four utility poles. Typically we do 100 foot spacing, but try to put less utility poles. Nobody likes utility poles, I know it. Uh, um, we, you know, we said we'll stretch it out a little bit so there's less there. And also the way we're constructing, constructing this is less tree impact. Um, we'll, I'll be here next week with Dave to discuss the, um, the, that, that portion of it. But the way we, we're, we're building this, it goes back and forth on the roadway, so we don't need to do a lot of tree removal. So we know that that area is a scenic road, not that road, but off of it is, I believe. And we're trying to do less impact on that. This is the best way we have by cutting our customer load in half by directing it through there for reliability reasons. I will say, in, in, in less... Uh, Yes, nobody likes utility poles. But if there's something I like less than utility poles, it's utility poles that keep crossing the street, which look more unsightly than if they just stayed on one side of the street. Right. So what is the impact? I mean, is it physically not possible to put all these on the same side of the street? Well, what it does is that um, when it, when, if you go five feet off the roads, and if you look at that area, it's heavily treed. You're talking large removal of trees. To do so for us to I, I I'm with you I love to keep them on one side but for me to do that I'm removing a massive amounts of okay. trees and by doing this you can pick your spots and you don't there's two crossings here right um, the, the one before the end and then that sharp corner okay. um, so I do understand that but we, we, we try to do less impact on tree removal by doing by crossing the road it's really it's not impactful on on, on the tree portion of it I think I I think I would be more comfortable if you guys are going to be here next week deferring this one. Um, <coughs> you know, I think I'd like to, I haven't driven down here to take a look, but I do have some questions on one Kilburn, where the driveways are there. As we look at 20 Kilburn Street, you know, I think just to get, just for me to have a better idea of what this vegetation looks like. And if you're going to be here next week, uh, would that, would you have a conflict with us? deciding this in a week's time we can discuss this again next week uh, yeah absolutely if you look I, I put poll locations out there so you could see okay ahead of time for that reason so if you could take a look there's at no there's no, there's driveway, no driveway location way. on one Kilburn Street no there, there, there's no driveways um, the only driveways on that very corner um, pardon me I didn't bring my glasses on Kilburn but it's on the opposite side of the road okay. up to the left hand side they're up more towards um Lemonster Road their, their driveway is not down towards that way okay so there's all the, when we designed it, there was no impact on. There's only one driveway. Okay. You but understood. Can, yeah. If you want to, please. You know. Do you guys concur that you you have no problem waiting until next week? What would you I like? don't have a problem with waiting. I don't have a problem approving it tonight. Okay. I don't see the point in not waiting. If you know, just to, if you want to digest it. So. Yeah. yeah, we'll be here next week. I'd be I'd be happy to. Okay. We will take up this last one uh, next week then. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. This one's continued until next week. I can just sign these two then. Lou gets the illustrious uh. honor of signing the first page of each.
think this is where you get the special spark. signatures. Oh. <laughs> well, he's taking the one out. Yeah, I think I won't sign in red like I did on that. All right, so. I don't see a large stack of bills today. Either. Lou, just know that you have to sign on the first page and the second page. Okay. Okay, 7.30, we have a skate park update. Oh, it's a double, just, just like Unitil, we got a, a double skate parker. Okay, so let's go, let's start with the skate park update. And to anybody who's gonna speak, before you speak, please introduce yourself so we know who is speaking. You can either do it all at the beginning or as you speak, if you have all your parts, so. We'll just do it as we speak. Okay. Um, so my name is Aiden Moore. I live at 59 Wildwood Road. Um, so I will do the park design update. Um, so in this time that we have not met with you guys, we have been talking to three different groups mostly. First of being the Parks Department, uh, Lunenburg's Parks Department. Um, we basically have been talking about where we can fit the skate park in to Marshall Park. Um, and we figured out uh, that it'll be the first basically operation in the whole Marshall Park plan or our park will get built first and then Marshall Park will be revamped all around it. Um, we have also been talking to WOLA, the uh, company who is doing the revamping of Marshall Park. They um, have been also trying to fit our park into the whole Marshall Park plan and um, we are down to mere feet on where it's going to be. And we have also been, we're in the final process of trying to get our final design. And we have been talking to two designers that we've narrowed down out of 18, being uh, Rampage and Frontier. Frontier has given us a final design and, uh, and Rampage is in the final steps of giving us a design. Uh, in regards of building the park. Uh, just introduce yourself first. Oh, please. sorry. My name is Chris Roy, I live at 105 Chestnut Street. In terms of building the park, my father, who is a co-owner of Dillis and Roy, which is a civil design group in the center of town, has graciously donated both time and money to help us with the engineering work for our facility. Uh, we've been able to get quotes on the, the, tech, the geological survey, which is essentially a full survey soil analysis, which will help us determine everything that goes on underneath the park. In order to for this to happen, we need to know the exact. We need to first know the exact location of the park, which will be given to us by Wola, as he has already previously stated. In terms of speaking engagements, we next week we have a meeting with the National Youth Leadership Council, where we're doing a team podcast with them. We have an interview with the CEO of the council, who is intrigued to help us inspire others about our project. They have a national annual convention that we have been graciously invited to, where we're able to present our project. And on top of that, we have a meeting with local area service learning groups where, to, where we aim to inspire fellow high school students to help out with our project and also build something in their community and bring it to life. We've been able to do this before, but it has unfortunately been derailed due to COVID and we're excited to get it started back up again. That is amazing. That is amazing. Hi, I'm Griffin Cauzo. Um, I live at 1091 Mass Ave. Um, I'm here to talk about the upcoming fundraisers in the next couple months. Um, we are hoping to get approval to run another toll booth on May 14th. Um, as we've seen with the past two toll booths we've ran, we've exceeded all expectations for them, uh, with people saying that we wouldn't raise over $1,000. Um, the first toll booth we raised over $3,000, and the second toll booth we ran, we raised a little bit under $5,000. So, Hopefully this will be another great fundraiser for us, bringing in a good chunk of change. Um, it's uh, awesome to see our town engaging with the project and seeing all the support um, our community has for the project. Um, the other fundraiser we're hoping to run this spring is the Learn to Skate Day. Uh, we still haven't decided the date uh, we want to run it, 
Um, it's Can you say that one more time? The what? The Learn to Skate Day. We, we ran it last year. Um, we had a little over 50 kids come in and a bunch of them stepping on a board for their first time. Um, we taught them for 30 minute sessions and a bunch of them ended up signing up for uh, lessons taught by the skate park uh, throughout the summer. Um, so it, that was also great to see the community and the youth um, really getting involved with skateboarding and seeing our passion growing in the town. Um, we wanted to thank our, the school and everyone who helped donate time and their support towards these fundraisers to make them happen. Thank you. Um, Mason Whitcomb, 110 Houghton's Mill Road. Um, since we started this project, we've done almost 50 fundraisers in total. One of our most recent was the 100 kilometer run, which was run by James Reynolds, who was over there. He ran 100 kilometers all at once in a span of just under 15 hours. Uh, it was a great day. He left the night before, and then I think around 10 or 11 in the morning, we had a bunch of the community members come out. We had food, we had hot drinks for everybody. The uh, local um, cross country team even ran the last half mile with him or so. Um, we're super grateful to have him. He's joining our board and he's contributing even further to the skate park and the community. We are also really hap happy to have connections with Ben Howard, who is a graduate of Lunenburg High School and is actually one of the first, he's one of the creators of the original Lunenburg Skate Park, the one where the remains still are in Marshall Park right now. Um, super excited to work with him. He knows a bunch of great people to, to know, and we're just really happy to see uh, where he'll take us. Um, we're also super grateful for the Miles for Miles Foundation for donating their final funds to us because we know how much that this has meant to them. It's been a very large portion of their life raising money for the community, and we hope that uh, our skate park will be able to carry on their legacy, bringing joy to the community and uh, helping everyone out. So. Thank you. So <clears throat> I want to say that every time you're before us, you, you guys never cease to impress me about your... Uh, ability to organize, uh, the ability to do the work, and then present it here as well, very professionally. And I can only wish that everybody who presented to us did it in such a, a fine way. I want to thank you and your, your, everybody who's involved with the organization for all the work you've done thus far. And of course, all the people behind you who have helped you behind the scenes as well. I want to thank them. Uh, it's really been incredible to watch the evolution of this project uh, and to see you guys sticking with it. I see that Griffin didn't get the memo about what sweatshirt to wear. Uh, <laughs> but I, I really look forward to, to this, uh, to, to you guys reaching your goal. And I'm so glad that you're involved with the Marshall Park Plan and the Parks Commission. Uh, I always thought that's where it should have been from the beginning, and I'm so glad to see that that happening. And to even though you've had hurdles, you've had COVID like everybody's had, but some of the hurdles about the location, I know there's, you know, that was probably stressful. I'm glad to see you persevere and come through it because it really uh, is really worth it. So I want to thank you all for your your efforts and your hard work, and I do want to see this come to fruition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I did also forget to mention I was supposed to say. Through our almost 50 fundraisers, we have raised over $175,000 looking to fundraise $50,000 or yeah, fifty thousand dollars more. Do you guys have any more questions about anything? Anybody have any for questions anybody? for the group? Yeah, I want to offer a comment. $175,000 is incredible. So first, it's amazing that all of you guys take civics together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since Lou and I uh, were in your class a few weeks ago. Um, you know, this is, this. you guys are demonstrating like the purpose of what we do. You know, and and I think this is good proof that if you just get involved and you and you speak up and you want to see some change in your community, that it can actually happen. You know, so this is a lesson that you guys will you're going to remember this whole process for the rest of your life. And I promise you that your children, when you have them, are going to probably do something similar, you know, because it does take a certain type of person. And I'm sure your parents are similar people. It does take a certain type of person to really give back to your community in this kind of substantial way. And as young men, you know, preparing for the future, this is, you know, I try not to swear, but this is some good shit. So this is good. <laughs> and there goes our rating. <laughs> <laughs> so good, good job, you guys, for real. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So who's going to ask for the, uh, please. Oh, good. sorry. I just wanted to echo uh, and commend you for, for the dedication and effort that you've put into this. It's very impressive. 
uh, in a similar vein, um, your volunteerism uh, on this project is, is very impressive. And that combined with your pers persistence, because this has been a long time coming, yep. is that that's even the most impressive. And if you can keep that persistence through all your endeavors, I think uh, you're going to be continue to be successful. For sure. So which one of you is going to be asking for the request for the fundraiser? Oh, is there somebody else who's asking this? <laughs> I see somebody. I see some hand directing to somebody here. Okay. All right. Well, the rest of the, the rest of my board want to come up. It's our last hurrah here. Well, welcome back. I haven't all seen the, you in so many oldies. years, We're Sandy. Here. I'm uh -huh. so glad to see you. I have to say, it has nice been to so see long. You. It has been a long time. Um, I'm Sandy Lassert, Sharon Albertini, Pete and Kate McCarran. Donna Fortune. Um, we are the probably the originals. We are the originals <laughs> of the um, Lunenburg Track and Athletic Fields project that started 25 plus years ago. Um, we're here tonight to obviously present some funds to this amazing group. 20 years ago, we lost Miles, and when we did, a barked in his memory. That road race paid and helped support the track and field project and that was you know completed in 2007. We had we continue to have different fundraisers and different things to support youth programs in the town and the youth and it brings us to today. Um, we have had a foundation that we decided that we are going to share our remaining funds with this group because they do have such great stick to <laughs> and um, oh well-deserving. They've, they've stuck with it for a long time. So we are um, donating $11,400 to the um, skateboard park fund, which makes the total from the Miles um, Foundation $20,400 that we have donated towards the fund. We want to congratulate Anthony, wherever he's running around, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the group um, for all their amazing efforts, and we hope to see it in fruition. I couldn't think of a, uh, of a better transition that that this group meet this group because you know you five and and the people who served I mean there's more than five who served but you know you know the years and you know decade or so that it took to raise the money for the field and all the fundraisers and everything and if anything your example and your persistence is a great example to them who are already exhibiting that. I mean, I read somewhere, I don't know who said it, but above more than talent and more than ability, what makes people successful is perseverance. And I could not agree with that more. So what a great transition. And so thank you so much to all of you uh, in setting an example for all of us and certainly for them and, and in your donation to them. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I'm here to propose the um, the fundraiser for the toll booth on May 14th. Uh, we filed our application. Um, I, I'm just asking for the approval to run it. So it is May, just so everybody at home knows, it's it's scheduled for May 14th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in town center. You obviously this is not your first. Uh, Fundraiser, toll booth fundraiser, so you know all the rules and you agree to follow all the rules, et cetera, correct? Yep. Uh, I would entertain a motion regarding the request for a toll booth from the skate park uh, to do the fundraiser, the toll booth fundraiser from May 4th, on May 14th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in town center. You guys are having too much success. I'm going to move that we do not approve this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I move to... Uh, uh, approve the permit application for the boot drive proposed for May 14th, uh, 2022, uh, 
uh, for the Lunenburg Skate Park. Do I have a second? Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Keep up the good work, gentlemen. Uh, and to any of your members who aren't here, please extend it to them as well, and good luck on the fundraiser. Thank I'm you sure much. we'll see you around on that Saturday. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now interviews and appointments. We have an interview and appointment of a member to the Cultural Council, Judith Ernst. Is Judith here? She is not. I know she was uh, going to Zoom in, but I don't see her present. Okay, so we will we postpone. Table, table that thing. All right, so we will re. We have to we reschedule. Just, we can just um, maybe when she shows up. Okay, well, if, if, we, she, if, she, if shows she shows up. up. All right, mm -hmm. then how about is John Beal on? Uh, so Matt, right? So John was supposed to be here tonight as well in person, um, but okay. Mr. Proctor is here. Who's not on the list? Oh, yeah, there he yeah, is at the is. end. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, interview and appointment of members to the Stormwater Task Force, Matt Proctor from 180 Hemlock Drive. Good evening. Hi, Can good you evening. just introduce yourself, say a little bit about yourself, and why you want to be on the Stormwater Task Force? Sure. Yeah, my name is Matt Proctor. I live at 180 Hemlock Drive here in town. Um, I'm interested in being part of the Stormwater Task Force. Um, of course, we see lots of runoff issues in town, and I think it's a, a good thing that's going on. I'd like to be a part of it. I think it could offer um, some knowledge from a contractor's point of view. I'm a masonry contractor in town. I also deal with uh, plenty of small stormwater issues with people's houses, um, catching water, repercolating into the watershed. And um, so I think I could have a, a good insight on a different angle um, to help them, you know, resolve some of these problems and have a you know, a mission for how we're going to, the town could handle some of these issues. Sounds good. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Proctor? Uh, I just have a comment. Uh, Mr. Yes. Proctor, thank you for stepping forward and volunteering. Uh, to echo his, his comments, um, as part of the Stormwater Task Force, one of the things we wanted was uh, someone in town who had a, a contractor's perspective because as we develop, you know, uh, um, or in, uh, as we uh, enforce or the MS4 permit or we meet requirements of the MS4 permit, uh, some of the things that we do um, are going to affect the contractors in town. So we don't want to create uh, uh, regulations that will uh, uh, cause an undue burden um, on contractors in town if we can avoid that. That's why I think his uh, will be a, a wonderful addition. Uh, to be able to provide some of that insight. Excellent. I'll just offer that uh, my father thought very highly of you, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so uh, certainly, I, you know, and he was a very critical person, as I'm sure you know. So, <laughs> so I certainly will uh, support your nomination tonight. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> I just want to thank you for stepping forward. That's all I have. I would echo uh, what Mr. Dwyer said, especially, I mean, I don't. I didn't know Mr. Jeffrey's father, so I can't <laughs> echo his support. Uh, but I think that having a contractor who is dealing with this—I don't know. I, I see you do a lot of masonry, but I, I, do you do also foundations and stuff? Yes. Okay. So I mean, so runoff and everything is part of you, what you do. Absolutely. And especially if you're building fieldstone walls and things of that nature, obviously keeping water and moving is part of your profession. I think it would be good to know how this affects, you know, building structures and what what bylaws and what procedures we should be putting in place to not only protect the runoff, but also not overburden the homeowners too. So it's really a kind of a balance. So I think it would be a, a great addition to the, to the task force. So I am certainly fully supportive of your candidacy here. So with that, I would entertain a motion regarding uh, Matt Proctor of 180 Hemlock Drive, his uh, appointment to the Stormwater Task Force. Oh, do we know when the term will expire? 
Uh, yes. There's uh, no term limits on because it's a well, task force. Right, it's a task right. force. It's not, it's not elected. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's until you don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I move to uh, I move to approve the application for Mr. For Matt Proctor to be appointed to the Stormwater Task Force. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. None. Okay. So, Thank you. Mr. Beal and Ms. Ernst, we will, if they come by the end of the, the evening, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. And thank so, you. again, as, as you heard before, uh, if you were here from the other appointments, if, just go to the town clerk and get sworn in at your earliest convenience and certainly before your next meeting. Absolutely. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Good you. luck. Uh, so, Mr. Beal and Ms. Ernst, we, if they come by the end of the meeting, we'll come back to them. Otherwise, we will reschedule. Ratification of town manager's appointment of assistant to the sewer business manager, and that would be Paula Bertram. Name sounds familiar. <laughs> yes, this, um, I'm asking the board to ratify my appointment of Paula Bertram as the assistant to the sewer business manager. So this position has been unfilled for um, many, many months. It was initially a part-time position. Uh, we weren't getting the applicant pool that we so desired. It was um, addressed at the special town meeting to get additional funding for the sewer enterprise to make this a part-time benefited position at 24 hours a week. And, um, and I'm asking the board to ratify this appointment tonight. Mrs. Bertram, she has many years experience in town government, as you well know, um, both volunteer and as a paid employee. She worked for many years for the Board of Health, and she was actually a member of the Sewer Commission at one point as well. So she's highly qualified for this position. I don't have any questions. Me neither. I would entertain a motion uh, ratifying the town manager's appointment of Paula Bertram to the, 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 to the post of assistant to the sewer business manager. I move to um, ratify the town manager's appointment of Paula Bertram uh, to the position of assistant to the sewer business manager. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Town manager report. So, announcement of existing vacancies. There are two vacancies on the Architectural Preservation District Commission, one vacancy on the Council of, on Aging, multiple vacancies on the Economic Development Committee, one regular member vacancy and two associate vacancies on the Green Communities Committee, one vacancy on the Housing Authority, that would be a joint appointment between the Select Board and the Housing Authority until the next annual town election, and one associate vacancy for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Anyone interested in serving on these boards and commissions can fill out an application form, which is found on the town website, complete the form, and send it to the Select Board's office. And if you have any questions about the roles and responsibilities of the positions, please contact our office as well at 970-582-4130, extension 144. And just um, for the board's um, awareness that we ha do have a couple applicants for these positions that will be coming up on the future agendas. For current employment opportunities with the town, there is a digital services staff librarian position, which is a part-time benefited position. The DPW director position, which is a full-time benefited position. Minutes clerk position, for, which is part-time non-benefited position. A trash and recycling coordinator, which is a part-time non-benefited position. Van driver, which is a part-time non-benefited position. And videographer positions with PAC, which are part-time non-benefited positions. Information on these positions can be found on the town website as well. Um, and that will tell you when, where to submit applications. An update on Meadowoods. Uh, this is a further update from the last meeting. The treasurer collector infor informed me this week that Meadowoods has paid all their back taxes. Wow. 
Yes. So they, uh, that remaining balance that they paid was $338,341 in addition to the 400000 that they paid um, in, within the last month. So we still have that agreement with Meadowoods that um, stipulates that they're to keep current on their existing taxes. So that was great news. That's incredible news. Mm -hmm. yeah. Update on the principal assessor position. Last week, the assistant town manager and I met with both the personnel committee and the board of assessors regarding the hiring of a new principal assessor. The new principal assessor will be Christopher C.J. Carroll. C.J. previously worked for one of our um, assessment firm, consultant firms, hiring assessment consultants, and he uh, was one of um, Lunenburg was one of his communities, so he's very familiar with the town, and in his words, is uh, the friendliest community that he worked in. So he was um, made a point of making that known. And he is coming from the town of Winthrop as their assistant assessor, and pre also has prior experience as a realtor. So the assessors ratified my appointment at their meeting last week, and he will begin this coming Monday. March 14th. Excellent. Yes. An update on the Woodruff property, which is 104 Fairview Road. I attended the Conservation Commission's meeting. Um, they had a, a continuation of the public hearing for the notice of intent that was filed for this property on February 16th, and the commission accepted the NOI and has um, since issued a order of conditions. So the next step is I'll work with the environmental consultant on putting together bid specifications for the project to address the order of conditions. And um, tonight we'll go review the draft annual town meeting warrant and I've included an article for funding for the work for this property. So um, putting this on the warrant um, in uh, light of if there are any state or federal funds available that uh, we would not spend those funds that were appropriated at town meeting. An update on 925 Mass Ave. Over the last couple of weeks, I worked with our environmental consultant from the beta group to fill out the EPA's Brownfields targeted assessment application form to request funding to remove the underground storage tanks and a limited soil removal at 925 Mass Ave. And I have a phone conference with our consultant and the EPA rep um, this Thursday to review the application and the next steps. And um, I've also asked and waiting on uh, when they would be able to come to a select boards meeting as well. An update on Lunenburg Central project. The town received the building permit associated payment from Lunenburg Central last week in the amount of 187,000. The site work has commenced and the owners hope to be moving tenants into the building in 2023. Can you remind me what this exactly is? I don't remember. This is the building on Lemus Shirley Road, the warehouse? Oh, okay, thank you. <clears throat> 400,000 square foot warehouse. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> An update on FY23 budget. Uh, the week of February 14th, we received our actual active health insurance renewal rates, which is a 5.56% increase. The preliminary budget had a 6% increase. We received the preliminary budget assessment from Money Tech that was uh, $1,054,376, which is a 20.3% increase. We received notification from MassDOT that our Chapter 90 local transportation funding for fiscal 23 will be $419,940. This is approximately $5,000 more than fiscal 22. And we received the final um, assessment for our dispatch, which will be $204,606, which is a 2.56% increase. An update on the fiscal 23 capital plan. After evaluating the current annual town meeting articles that will require funding, additional resources from unexpected, 
unexpended capital articles from previous years and the current surplus in the budget. I've revised the fiscal 23 capital plan funding recommendation. The Ritter hazardous materials abatement project will be pushed into fiscal 24 in order to perform an evaluation as the preliminary step that will help determine the extent and the costs of the work to be done. So um, we plan uh, hope to do that this year. Um, so we'll be ready with a more defined cost estimate and extent of the work um, when we undergo the capital planning process next year. I am recommending an additional $422,800 to be allocated towards the fiscal 23 capital plan. Um, with the breakdown is an additional $155,075 from unexpended capital articles, and an additional $267,725 from the unappropriated balance from the available tax levy. Based on my current prioritized list of capital projects, this will fund installing a generator at the Senior Center, creating an ADA-compliant outdoor patio at the Senior Center, and the AC at the primary school project. The new total recommendation for the Fiscal 23 Capital Plan is $2,162,849. Any questions? That is great. An update on COVID, the weekly update from the Board of Health and the total number of new cases reported as of February 26th was zero. And the positivity rate was 0.89%. Yeah, that's excellent, too. Good news. Yes, other good news. And just a reminder that there will be a tax lien auction on March 17th at 10 a.m. I have a question about the budget updates. Yes. So the first, uh, on each bullet point, well, mm -hmm. not each bullet point, three of the four bullet points. Num bullet point number one, so we have a 0.44% decrease in what was budgeted so what is the money what how much money is that translate to because health insurance is a big line item it actually uh, doesn't translate into a whole lot so that was about uh, three thousand four hundred and thirty nine dollars um, because it was like a point yeah uh four four yeah, percent four, four. yeah okay well, so. yeah okay um the monty tech it's a tw that that number was what what were you carrying as your expectation the difference in what i was carrying um so to um the town's positive is two thousand six hundred and fourteen dollars so it's less than what you had yes budgeted. okay good and uh, the dispatch yes um is eight thousand five hundred nineteen dollars uh, less than i carried okay. in my and for those listening, when they heard the 20% increase from Monty Tech, it should be noted that there's a very large increase in, in pupils going there from yes. last year. So that's what most of the increase is, just so you know. It's not their cost going up. It's our share of students went up appreciably yep. uh, from last year. 11 students addition. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I, I had one other question. Um, I think it was great in regard to the capital plan. I think it's great news. Um, uh, to be able to pay for these additional items. Um, the AC at the primary school, uh, I believe at a previous meeting, it was brought up by, um, I think Mr. Passios indicated that uh, with the addition of the AC, there may be a requirement to upgrade the electrical service at the school. Is Does this number reflect an upgrade of the electrical service or can you confirm whether that's necessary or not? The school did address that at the Capital Planning Committee meeting, um, and it, this was their um, cost estimate provided because um, they had a difference of opinion on the, the service. Okay, mm -hmm. very good, thank you. One last thing, and that was, uh, I'm very pleased to hear the news about Metalwood, although it does raise a flag. It's like, why is somebody accelerating the payments of $300,000 uh, when they don't want to. Is there intent to keep, th this is my concern, and I'll just be right up front about it. Is it their um, plan to keep this running as a, uh, as a mobile home park? Or are they looking to displace people and use this property for something else? 
They haven't indicated any okay. such notion to us. I don't want to look a gift horse, so, but I do yeah. have that concern. They, I mean, um, and I didn't go into this in my report, but it was basically they saw how much interest they were going to be paying over the next few right. years, and they wanted to forego that cost, yeah. so they found it. I don't. I don't want to. I. I just wanted to say the question mm -hmm. out loud. I have never met the people, and believe me, I to get seven hundred thousand dollars worth of back taxes paid is really great. Great news. So, and if they want to keep running it, and they're showing this kind of capital improvement, this is the best thing that's happened for this project or, or this property for a long time. So, mm -hmm. I don't want to cast any doubts or anything, but I did want to ask the question. Okay, any other questions about town manager report? Okay, now we get to the fun things. First, trash and town services on private roads. So, Mr. Jeffries, I believe you asked this to be uh, added to the agenda, so I will let you kick it off if you would like. Sure. <clears throat> so, you know, many residents um, are, you know, have been concerned about the quality of the trash service uh, especially over the last couple of months and and I think that we can we've explained that a lot of this has to do with COVID um, in terms of you know staff being out that we have you know executives of the company being in trucks right now trying to make sure they're doing these runs that the company really is in my opinion doing all that they can but that you know they're just having a difficult time with staffing and, and the impact of COVID on their staff but then the second issue came up, a few residents reached out to me who live on private roads, and the concern was that they've been receiving this service on their, on their, pro, on their road and for the last however many years, and then now all of a sudden they don't. And so the question that I then asked was, you know, of the, in the contract that we signed with uh, E.L. Harvey, how many roads were private? Um, and then of those private roads, to get a better understanding of like services provided, a comparison, how many of those roads are also plowed by the town? Um, and is trash currently being picked up on these roads? And so what we have in our Google Drive is a list of all the streets uh, that were in the contract with E.L. Harvey, and there's a column that indicates if it's private or an accepted road, and there's a column that indicates if it's plowed by the town. If it's a private road, it does not have to be plowed by the town. Um, and if the trash pickup occurs. Now, I understand that there's going to be, on the private roads generally, that the trucks, the, that E.L. Harvey has bigger vehicles than Casella had, that some roads Casella was dry, backing down and E.L. Harvey is not able to do that uh, because their truck configurations and size, that they will only go down a road if they can turn around in that road. So that there, there likely will be a change in service, but I wanted to have the conversation tonight um, really about you know do i think there's a necessity here to send a communication out to the residents who live on these private roads and advise them of you know the services that the town will you know for example if you live on a private road and, the, and right now a plow tr a, a plow truck is going down it or a trash truck is going down it if the condition of that road changes and that service will likely stop and i think that there needs to be a appropriate expectations set um, so that way residents are aware uh, for, for now in the future of what services are being provided but are kind of conditional and that and that they and, and if they have an expectation to kind of maintain things or or in the cases where they were previously receiving trash service but are no longer that to also communicate that to them and and give them the, the rationale for why. So after reviewing this myself, after uh, Mr. Jeffries brought this to my attention, um, one of the things that this list has indicated pretty clearly to me is that we need to adopt, we need to work up and adopt a policy so that there's no guessing from anybody whether they should or shouldn't get those services. Uh, and it, that's not going to be something that we can decide without consultation with the DPW director about why some private roads are plowed and why others aren't. And we have some indications from why Casella, our previous uh, trash contractor, waste contractor, did some private roads or not because of the size of the vehicles and the, and the configuration of the vehicles is different. 
Um, so we're going to have to craft a policy that clearly states so we can point to people so it does not look arbitrary. Uh, so I think we're going to need to do that. I don't think there's going to be any change in this right now, but we do need to address it. Um, I do know in consultation with town manager that when we went from Casella to E.L. Harvey, when we went out the bid, we asked Casella what their route was, and this list was their route, and that's what we used. Uh, one could argue that maybe when we have trash uh, contracting services being bid, when we look at this list, we should probably look at it and review it for private roads or not, not just take what the other company did as what we want to have done. So I, I think this is a good entryway into that discussion to policy development. I would open it up for discussion further. All right. I just one of the things I'm troubled by is at the time that uh, E.L. Harvey entered into this contract. Uh, thank you. Uh, I mean, some of these private roads that are not they were within the scope of the contract that was envisioned. Uh, some of these private roads that are now not getting serviced. Is that correct? Yes. 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 They were on the list. So these are sophisticated contractors that to, to, to my mind, I guess my concern here is that residents were getting a service before that they are now not getting. And I don't know that they're going to be satisfied with mere explanations as to why that is. Um, now, uh, and we're dealing with a sophisticated contractor that either knew or should have known that w what these private roads were, or at least made inquiry into it. Uh, you know, they've entered a zillion of these contracts. I, I, I'm sure they've encountered this problem before. So for them not to be bound by the literal terms of the contract is very troubling to me. So I just want to voice that and maybe you know, initiate a discussion around it. I agree with the comments that have been said. Um, if private roads were on the street listing in the contract and they're not being serviced, then something has to be done about it. And I agree that we need to craft a policy that, that clearly outlines which roads in town get services and which services are being provided to those roads, whether it's, whether it's you know, trash or it's you know, sewer or town water or whatever it is. You know, across the board, we need to have clear understanding of where town services are provided and who gets them and, and that sort of thing. Um, so far, based on what I've seen on social media, um, it's been a very tough winter. There have been a number of factors, as Mr. Jeffries outlined. I think everyone can understand. But uh, I think in the coming spring, we really need to uh, hopefully see a uh, drastic improvement in the service uh, uh, reported in the town for, for trash pickup. So, yeah, so that's a, a separate issue, but I will address one comment on that issue. So there, there has been on social media, as you said, Mr. Dwyer, frustration and everybody's, you know, the, the pandemic has not helped. The fact that uh, the truck servicing Lunenburg got into an accident and was injured and the, the driver was injured, that didn't help. Uh, people being sick, you know, with, with COVID not being up. So there's lots of things. But the one thing that I heard said that I have to comment on is, well, the town has to step in and do something. So the, t the, the town doesn't run a trash pickup service. We contract it out. When we contracted this out last time, we got one bidder. So it's not like there's a plethora of people. It's not like replacing a busboy in a restaurant. While we may feel frustrated and need to do something, there's not a whole lot of people to go to. The players are very, very uh, few who are even in, in this field, in this area. So, you know, if it got bad enough, we could certainly, I guess, look at, I'm sure there are penalties in the contract and everything. And I guess at the worst case, if there was egregious enough, we could void the contract, which would be legal fills. But then we'd have to still get somebody to bid to do it. So it isn't as easy as just asking somebody because there's lots of contractors out there. There's not. Yeah. So I just want people to be aware of that. And, we're, and while we're sensitive to the problem, the solution isn't so easy either. 
there has been a consolidation of trash companies as of late. And in this area, even last year, uh, waste management bought nine of the local small kind of trash companies. Right. And so we just don't have, we just don't have the services. You know, you, uh, waste management and Republic are kind of exploding in, in size. I, I, to Todd's point, and, um, and I, well, really to Todd and to Lou's point, I, I wonder how much more pressure though that there can be on our side to say look it's in the contract and we need you to go down these roads and I, and and i can fully understand the back and down thing like i get that that if they didn't know they needed to back down a road and now they do that i can understand why that is is a problem and i completely can get that but if the issue isn't backing down the road and there are just a few roads where they aren't getting that trash service you know i'd like to have a better understanding of of why that's not happening. I would ask a question. I was going to address some oh, of the comments that I, were well, let me made. just add one yeah. to the file. Mm -hmm. And that is, mm -hmm. I didn't see a list of what was put out as far as the list. And uh, to, the, to my understanding, this is the first I'm hearing, that there were roads on the list that were part of the contract that they do not service. I understand that there were private roads that weren't part of the old contract that, that you know, that they didn't, that weren't on the list, that Casella did service, but it didn't make this list. But if there were things that went out as part of the bid package, and now they're not servicing those, that I do, I agree with Lou. If that is true, then I have a problem with that because that was part of the deal. The, my request from to Mr. Oliver was to list in here all of the streets that are in the contract. So my understanding is that every street that's listed here is in the contract with E.L. Harvey. Yeah. So it says in your Google Drive where it says trash pickup list, it says no or yes. If it's a yes, that was in the original bid package as one of the streets that they would pick up on. If it says no, it was not on that list. Okay, so let me, let me ask this question then specifically. Mm -hmm. Are there, were there roads in the original bid package that E.L. Harvey is not picking up? Yes. There are, yes, there are private roads because of their road conditions, and this came about more when the winter conditions started that they're not able to pick up on, and that is the, the crux of the private road issue for most of those private roads and how many that are roads listed does that, that were in the contract. I think there were 34 private roads. But are they not picking up all 34 private roads? The, I've list, I've indicated where I need to check on those, so this is a work in progress. Okay. Well, if they were in but, the bid and they were able to survey what the routes were, then to, Lou, to Mr. Franco's point, I too then have a problem if they've decided unilaterally that they're not doing it. Yeah, that hasn't been the response that they've re refusing to do it. It's their ability to get to those locations. But they because bid on the project knowing what the routes were. Mm -hmm. So would the, did they just look at a map and say, oh, we can get down there? Did they look at it? What I mean, it's not sufficient. I understand his point, and I'll argue it just as fervently, <laughs> that... It's not sufficient to say, oh, now that we're doing it, we realize we can't do it. That, that was supposed to happen before. So if they need to get a pickup truck and get down there and pick them up, then that's what I want them to do. They said they would pick up these roads. They agreed to it. They didn't come to us before we signed the contract to say they weren't going to do these because it's not possible. They did it after the fact. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. There's, like I said, there's more to look into. Okay. Yeah. Um, regarding the contract, I have reviewed the contract because it's a lengthy contract with different provisions. Um, so I'm looking at the different measures that we can, um, can request of them, like getting a log of all the complaints because part of the penalty will require us to uh, prove different um, actions that aren't being undertaken as far as pick up miss roots and, 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 and what's their exit do i mean do they do they can they provide in the course of the contract notice that they just want to quit do they have an out 
That I would have to. Every contract yeah. has an out. Well, yeah, yeah, every contract has an out. But what, what concerns me though is is just the environment that we're in. That it, it is a little bit of a delicate situation in the sense that while I agree that the point of me even bringing this up was to uh, or, or raising this as an was was to really kind of put that pressure to say, look, we expect you to do it. And if you're not going to do it, then we need to have a really good reason why, and we need to get to the point where we're talking about amending the contract. And that was kind of my initial thought. Um, I think but that I in think that case, I delicate. think there was a payment uh, bond for the, the project. So if they weren't able to complete what they bid on, they'd have to pay the town. So that would initiate that bond. Okay. But I, I do, as I, you know, the, per, the, the one of the families that reached out to me live on Hemlock Terrace. And I see that the note in here says that they can get plow service but not during bad weather um or they're not plow service they get service down their road but not during bad weather and i, and I i'm going to agree with you on this one mr lonzo that maybe there are solutions to get down these roads that they did provide a bit on but maybe it's not going to be their humongous trash truck maybe it is going to be another vehicle a pickup truck where you're going down and picking up all this stuff and and because if they bid on doing all this work and they bid on going down all these roads and now they're not going down all these roads, they're saving time and that right. time is money. Right. And so, you know, the town then, that needs to be factored back into this. So if they're saving time and money, I would hope that they can have a solution then that can be a stopgap in some ways. But I do think it's a little bit more delicate than just the black and white of saying just do it because I, I, I I, I don't want to find ourselves in a position where we have a vendor then that throws their hands up and says goodbye, and now we have a crisis on our hands. Yeah. On the reverse side, there were roads that weren't included in the bid that they are doing, that were missed, that weren't on Casella's list uh, uh, for route pickup that they added to. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of work that needs to be done on both sides mm -hmm. to make sure this is yeah. clean. I can up. tell you it's taking an oh, exorbitant okay. amount of time in our office at the DPW on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, well, it didn't happen with Casella, so I don't know what. Can, can you forward? I'd like to see, if, uh, regardless of the length of the, can you forward the contract? I'd like to read mm -hmm. the contract. Yeah, please. I was going to ask about too, yeah. yeah. I think I'm stating the office here, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I mean, the idea that a contractor can start unilaterally modifying the terms of a contractor simply because there's nobody else to resort to to fulfill the contract is a little egregious, you know. Oh, so, you know, <laughs> I mean, but you can talk to Unitel, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, they have a similar. I mean, yeah, it, it, it is. It's frustrating. I, I think to, to Mr. I, I think it's sensitive too, to a degree, but I think if if if. And I don't, again, I'm just doing a hypothetical, forget about that it's E.L. Harvey. If any contractor would just, in the middle of a contract or at the very beginning of the contract, just say, you know what, I'm not doing this, and it's a health concern because it's trash, I think they would be up for just incredible amounts of liability, like well beyond what the contract was worth for them to do it. So I think there's something in them that says they're not going to play that game either. But, you know, if they're not going to do it and we don't come to terms with it, we at least have to amend the contract and pay them differently, or they should adopt what they agreed to. Again, it wasn't it wasn't a surprise what ro roads we wanted them to cover. It was in the, the bid. Yeah, and I don't want to put the blanket statement out there for the public to say that they're saying refusing to go down mm -hmm. these roads either. They've worked with the DPW director and going out physically going out there to see what can be done so they can service those areas. So they're, they've been responsive in that way and trying to work with the town. It's not an easy solution. Okay, I will take, thank you for saying that, mm -hmm. and I will take the opportunity to say that I think it, I, I can acknowledge it's a complex problem that we want to address. I am not casting aspersions on the contractor or the people who are asking. I just, we need to come up with a policy and then we need to make sure that we get this addressed in fairness to people who were getting a service and aren't anymore. Those are the, the people who didn't get it before and are getting it, if there are any of those, you know, they're not complaining. The people who were getting it and now don't have trash pickup unless they go to private hauler mm -hmm. is the people who it's really affecting 
So is it possible to get a, to to go to Casella, not Casella, E.L. Harvey? And I I hear what you're. I'm I'm with you on this one, uh, town manager. Is it possible to go to them and say, "Hey, these are this is the contract. These are expectations. When can you? When based on your plans, when do you expect to be able to provide the service expected to these roads? And if you don't expect to be able to do that in the next 90 days, you know why? <laughs> and yeah. I think that may be you know the approach that identifies kind of a, a timeline for them so that's let you know and but also gives them the flexibility or not the flexibility but the room to figure out how to scale up to meet the needs mm -hmm. i've already um sent them a list of all these private roads um just to confirm the status on all of them and what's um, a solution um what's been identified to be confirm whether they're being picked up or not there's a lot of the Roads we don't may not get calls on. Yeah. Um, we are aware of the ones that we do. Right. We're in contact. So, Limster Shirley Road was up here. I thought I saw, which I thought was awkward. That Limster Shirley Road is up here not receiving trash services. They've um, I they've called multiple times. There's one house um, located there that um, because yeah. once you come to the end of uh, Lancaster. Um, it's the first house on if you took a right so it's right on the line there okay. but Yell Harvey has made aware, been made aware the last couple of days okay. of that. all right so you're you're gonna provide us with the contract so we can review it as well you're working with them but we also have to come up with you know start thinking about a policy with services to private roads both you know, municipal services as well as mm -hmm. contractor services. And then Heather was also going to reach out and get kind of a timeline on when they're going to scale, when they're going to meet the needs of the ex expectations of the contract. Well, just to try to come to some resolution. I mean, we need. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else on this topic? This is obviously going to come back to us. Again. Just for informational, just to drill down a little bit for my edification, is the uh, is it various issues? Is it they're afraid of liability because of narrow roads damaging people's property? Is it damage to their trucks? What what is the um, impediment to going down these private roads in particular, or does it vary? I think it's both. Um, yeah, yes, I've heard yeah. both. Yeah. I've heard that they're afraid of. That, that their trucks are going to get stuck or damaged mm -hmm. and that the private road because of the size of their trucks is going to get damaged and then people are going to complain that there's huge potholes because these trucks go down them. Mm -hmm. So is that something they'd probably be insured against but that's another. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, another I always say no, liability no, can not, be overcome. Not again. How, if it's a private road and it's not met the town standards and they made a claim that we don't want to go down it and we asked them to go down it, I don't think their insurance is going to cover that. Yeah. You know, the insurance is going to say if you do something out of the norm, if you, if you tell somebody to go down a, a gravel road with, with a you know, 10 ton truck, that's, that's not, and then something happens to the road, they're going to be like, well, what did you think was going to happen? But on the other side of it, I mean, they did sign a contract to go down a gravel road. <laughs> well, I mean, that's my issue. It's like, why didn't they? Why didn't they review where they were going? But again, but now we're just going in circles. So, all right, there's enough on that. We have Mr. Beal here. Let's go back to interview and appointment to the Stormwater Task Force. John Beal of 116 Island Road. Mr. Beal, come to the microphone. Introduce yourself and tell us why stormwater is your your thing. <laughs> John Veal, 116 Island Road. Because <laughs> uh, I got invited by Jack, and uh, he's very civic minded, and he's a very close friend of mine, so I think it's a good Jack, thing. Jack, Jack Rabbit. Rabbit. Okay. Yep. I'm, uh, I've always been shunning these kinds of posts because I wanted to retire first. I'm getting close to retiring, so I'm starting to consider it seriously. Cool. Questions for Mr. Beal? Uh, just a comment, Ms. Breel, thank you for stepping forward and accepting uh, Mr. Rabbit's uh, uh, invitation to join the Stormwater Task Force. Uh, Mr. Beal's got a background in engineering, and he's also been a member of the uh, Hickory Hills Dam Committee. 
and uh, I think he'll make a fantastic addition to the task force. I want to say thank you for stepping forward. Your background is an engineer, and uh, Mr. Dwyer's endorsement is enough for me. I, I su certainly support um, the appointment to the uh, Stormwater Task Force, and thank you, Mr. Bill. I will say the same. I think we, you know, Mickey again, yes. having, <laughs> having good people, having people with the proper background. I mean, ha getting people to volunteer is good to begin with. Getting people to volunteer who have good backgrounds and what we're looking for is always the extra, the extra bonus. So I really want to thank you, Mr. Okay, Peter. sure. I'm very happy to help. All right. Any so other? I would entertain a motion regarding the appointment of John Beale of 116 Island Road to the Stormwater Task Force. I move to appoint John Beale to the Stormwater Task Force. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. If you would go to the town clerk at your earliest convenience to get sworn in before your next meeting. Sure. And I'm sure Mr. Rabbit will tell you when that next meeting is. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, John. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Current business number two. Uh, Conrad's drive-in of 835 Mass Ave. Request to send a cease and desist letter due to operating without a common VIC license since January 1st, 2022. I understand there was some information today regarding this. Is that correct? There is. Um, they paid 20000 towards their back taxes, but it didn't fully pay off the outstanding amount. Did they give any indication when that would be? Uh, by the end of the by the end of the week, beginning of next week, I believe. Okay. Is the date. And it's nine thousand more dollars that's owed. Is that right? Well, I think it's more than that. I believe it is more than that. If you I look at the is, properties, I think it is uh, like they paid half. I believe so that's another. I think another uh, close to fifteen okay. or twenty, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, looking through the emails that are sent over to us, I mean, I mean, Conrad's is, is certainly a staple of our community, um, and it would absolutely suck if we have to issue them a cease and desist letter. But, I mean, I, I don't see a way not to. Um, have, they, have they been communicative with us on trying to work something out or trying to come up with some kind of payment plan? Like, have they made that type of effort to be like, trying this, you know, trying to do something? No, to my knowledge, today was the first day that they've actually contacted the town. In response to mm -hmm. all these communications, today yes. was the first day. And I mean, they are aware that they did not submit a common VIC application, because all those, those communications- No, they were, have submitted the application. Well, that it wasn't approved. Right. Um, and, you know, and, okay. I think there's no excuse for not communicating back with the town. Yep. I would say that, you know, and that's, it's, it's, there's nobody to fault but themselves for doing that because that needed to happen. Uh, that being said, two things. First of all, um, in my tenure here, I don't know that we've had a complaint about them ever before. And so it's not like we have a history with them. And with the pandemic losing lots of, you know, seeing a lot of businesses of this type, restaurants fail, I'd rather not have one fail. And if they've paid 20,000 and they've indicated that they're gonna to go to the end of the week, I'm more than happy. Just like we postponed the poll thing for one week, I'm willing to give them the end of the week to pay this since they've obviously engaged with this. And I'd be more than I'd be more than supportive of sending a cease and desist if they don't pay by next week, but I'd rather give them the opportunity to just get it done. Uh, again, I make no excuses for them not communicating with us from the beginning. Um, but times are hard, and I realize times are hard for everybody. So again, not an excuse. But at this point, having paid a half of it today. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to just let the week go. I don't think it matters to us cease and desist letter for a week. 
to just keep them at their word. And then if they don't, then just have it ready. Yeah. I, I can support that. You know, I think that when it comes to Conrad's and, and I, there's a certain level of sadness, in my opinion, to it, because I think that if they if they were having difficulty because of the pandemic, I mean, I have no doubt that they would have been able to fundraise a significant portion of this from the people in this town because everyone supports them. You know, and if, if this was something that they were out there aware of and, you know, but no response, you know, like there's no kind of like public engagement here of like, hey, you know, pandemic hit us hard. We want to stay in business. So, I mean, it, to me, it's, it's really just we have a business operating without a proper license. In order to get a license, you have to ha be current in your taxes. And so, you know, I will, unfortunately, you know, this is the uncomfortable part of our jobs, um, but I will support the request to delay a week and give them the opportunity to submit the rest of the payment and then to continue this conversation next week. Any objection to that course of action? I, I don't, I think that's where I'm going to wind up in the end, but I mean, it's already been stated that uh, hard times is an excuse for not paying. It's not an excuse for not communicating. I mean, that's free. <laughs> communicating. <laughs> but well, just, to be, just to be clear, yep. and I want to be clear here, that the business isn't what was owed the back taxes. So the business runs in a property that is not owned by the business. So the people who own the back taxes isn't the the uh, the corporation or the LLC. I don't know how it's incorporated of Conrad's. It's it's a private. It's a different property that they use the space of. So I just want to be clear on that. Okay. The other thing. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm 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 going to go where you're you're going, and it's it's totally reasonable. But um, I also don't want to say that I'm doing this because it's Conrad's. I think we'd have to. Because then we would be treating different people differently. I don't want to say that I'd treat another uh, situation differently. But um, what is the practical implication, though? I just want to know uh, of allowing them to continue to operate without the license. I mean, is that something that's really at our discretion? To like, if we if we haven't granted them the license, can we can we say they can still operate? I, uh, well, officially, they can't operate without a license. Us sending the cease and desist letter is a letter that would, you know, that, that is an action of ours. Um, that's a good question, to be very honest. Well, all right. I mean, I want it to go basically where Mr. Alonzo and Mr. Jeffries has said. I just, how, whatever it takes to get there, I guess. But, um, uh, so... But I want to be clear. I want to be clear. First of all, I'm not doing it because it's Conrad's and the history of Conrad's. I want to give a person. I, I want to give a company that has an, an otherwise unblemished record a chance yes. to make this right. It should not have lasted two months. I guess from us. I again, not knowing because it didn't get pulled from the list. I don't recall it, and maybe it's my oversight. Maybe it's on me that I didn't see that we didn't issue it. I wish we had known this way earlier instead of two months in. That well, I remember that we didn't issue them a license, that they were still open. Okay, so it was, so, all right, so then I will accept responsibility for that. Then. Um, but come Tuesday, 7 o'clock, it better be paid or they will get it. And then, you know, you know then I, you know, I'm, this is a big allowance. Yeah. And I want them to make the best of it, but they only get the week. I just want to throw out as an alternative, it, and it's the same practical effect, uh, I, but the, an alternative course of action would be uh, to issue the cease and desist but suspend it and indicate that it only goes into effect if they haven't paid the taxes by a certain date. I'm for, I'd be for that. I just don't want to make work for the town manager. Yeah, that is... that is. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm for that. I mean, I think that makes sense. But I... So just from, from a practical administration question for the town manager so whatever the balance is, is on their back taxes if they communicated would they be able to work out some sort of uh, installment plan with the town because mm -hmm. i think we've done that in other cases right but they're just yes. not communicating right correct mm -hmm. other than uh they came in made a payment and gave assurances more is coming mm -hmm. yeah you know that's allowable under the bylaw as well per personally i i think the 
lack of communication is really the egregious part here. And I, I, I would fully support issuing this cease and desist letter now, even if it's just uh, and suspending it, as Luce said, even if it's just to get him get him to communicate with the town. Yep. Again, I'm I, I, I'm I'm I'd be supportive of that. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would. I think because if they come back at the end of the week and say, you know what, here's another eight grand, but we need to put, get on a payment plan for the final amount due, you know, then we would just be retracting our cease and desist next week. So no, no, they're saying issue it and suspend it. So it would never go into effect. It would be suspended and, until such time as either they paid it off or they entered into a payment plan with the town. We want all of those things are available. Like yeah. the town isn't isn't you know some it's a wonderful life. I can't remember you know <laughs> Potter organization that you have to pay or you're done. I mean you can talk with us and say all right times are hard. Let's set, let's set a payment plan to to fix this. Yeah. It's, I, I agree with Mr. Dwyer. I think that the lack of communication is what the pr real problem is. I'm not sure where we left that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, again, I would be supportive. Way, yeah. I'd be supportive of the cease and desist to say that we did it and then suspend it for one week until they, we'll give them to that, that time to either pay it all in full or enter into a payment plan with the town. Is that? So suspend their common vector. License. No, no, no. To suspend the suspend the cease, cease and, and desist. desist. So, so sort of like a suspended what, sentence. What, what about just <laughs> issuing the cease and desist effective at our next meeting, and then if we want to rescind that. Well, cease that's what and I said. That's what my that's yeah, what my yeah, initial position was. Is that have it ready yeah. for next week, if they don't pay it by by you know Friday or by Thursday because we're closed on Friday. So if they don't pay it or come into a plan, we have it ready for. To what about it. just issuing it this week? Mm -hmm. and saying this is effective next week ne next That's week fine too what is easiest for you <laughs> i think we all know where we're going with this what is yeah. easiest for you um yeah that sounds like a three different ways to get to the same end point but um i'm just reading what adam wrote for the cease and desist and And was it really a need for you attorneys to have two words? You, cease wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> cease wasn't enough. You needed to cease and desist. It, it really makes the point. Yeah. <laughs> and if you use three words, I mean, there's no, there's no getting Ce out of it. Cease, <laughs> desist, and just stop it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so effective um, Tuesday, March 15th. Is yes. It? But when, and unless, 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 a pay, unless it's paid in full yep. or a payment plan agreeable to both parties has been entered into. And, and the town Agreeable manager would make the, that judgment, correct? Yeah, the, 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 the tax collector okay, and yeah. the mm -hmm. property owner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Does, yes, that's fine. My only question is, does that in effect give them permission to operate as a business for the next week yes yes more yeah. than yeah. more than do, not doing this and just picking this up next week because is there a difference there i, I i'm saying this because i think there is a slight difference between issuing a cease and desist and suspending it versus just issuing it next week well then we're doing then we're just giving them permission by omission i right. mean by they're, not they're doing the same thing you know so i'd rather just not have to if we my, try to get it out this week, my, it's my, my fear is if we don't send the cease and desist out this week, with so they know that it's going to go into effect next week. Then we send it out next week, and it, they don't really get it until mid next week, late next week, and they're even more time. Right. So we send it this week. They know it's coming. Well, they they're just down the road, and he's open. You know, those times we could hand deliver it too, <laughs> right? If we wanted, right? So all right, I'll, I'll support the motion. That I think we well, let somebody make a motion. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I move that we uh, draft and su and send a cease and desist, sus but suspend it mm -mm. to fix. Just date. say effective. Effective. Okay. Effective. Uh, effective. By a date we choose. March. March. Yeah. 15th. March fifteenth. Yep. No. Yes. Yeah. March fifteenth. Yep. Two. You got to think. You got to finish the rest of it. Say again. You got to finish the rest of that to Conrad. <laughs> Uh, oh yes. <laughs> unless. Unless, unless paid in full. Uh, unless paid in full or 
uh, acceptable payment arrangements have been made with the town with the and and send to Congress. the tax collector right? with the tax collector yep. payment agreement yep. Yep. second any further discussion please say no okay <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor aye, aye. yes aye. aye aye opposed none okay oh my <laughs> All right, uh, three is three was a fill in your own agenda item. Okay, uh, <laughs> I got worried about that one actually. Review of <laughs> I thought Mr. Jeffries might fill that in. <laughs> if you let's say review of town bylaws relative to the select board for the bylaw review committee. So did everybody get that? Yes. And everybody look at that. Yes. And does anybody have any comments about things that affect us? And I did email the chairperson of the bylaw review committee Who's today. Steve? But, no, Mary Foyle. Oh, Mary Foyle. Okay. And uh, just to, she did indicate through uh, previous correspondence that they may delay this to the special town meeting. So I emailed her it. today, but Hopefully. I haven't um, heard back from her. So Hell, I, I would, I would, yeah, that would be good mm -hmm. because there's going to be a lot of stuff on this town meeting, and yeah. if we can mm -hmm. push this. And that would also give us some more time because things have been kind of crazy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've reviewed most of this, but I, I have to admit that I haven't reviewed every single chapter in this. Yeah. So can we, does anybody want to discuss anything here tonight? No. Or can we no. go? All right. So let's put it on. Get it, let's try to get an answer from their committee if they're going to go to the special. Approved minutes of February 1st, 8th, and 15th. Uh, I think one of those I was not here for, so I have to find out which one of those it is. The 8th. I think, yes, the 8th, my birthday week, yes. That is correct. What week was that, Tom? February 8th. So let's take February 8th out of it. If, if somebody... I'll make the motion. Did anybody? Yeah, go ahead. I move to approve February. The minutes were February 1st and February 15th. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. So, minutes of February 8th, I would entertain someone to make a motion. I move to approve the minutes for February 8th. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And I abstain because I was not present. So. Okay. Warrants. No warrants. Any action items? Uh, yes. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> In light of the yes. town manager's report, uh, if we can send a communication back to the school committee, since the last one said that we were going to delay with just that update. Oh, yeah. oh, definitely. What? The school committee asked us about the, um, uh, they sent us a communication. That, that's right, it was on the 8th. The school committee sent us a communication about um, AC at the old. Oh, project. the AC. Okay, yep. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, and yeah. so we said that we would get back to them. So. Okay, yes. That's it. Uh, committee reports. Mr. Dwyer. None. Mr. Franco. Okay, Economic Development Committee met on the 24th of February, and we had a visit from Kevin Kuros, who is the uh, director for the central region of the Mass Office of Business Development. That was a really good discussion and, and presentation for about an hour uh, about how to support local businesses, vacant storefront programs, all the various programs that there are to support local businesses. I do want to follow up. Once uh, we're waiting to receive as a committee uh, some written materials from him, uh, his slide presentation that he normally gives to bigger groups, we haven't received that yet. When we do, I may comment on this further. Okay. Mr. Jeffries. Okay, uh, two. So uh, the first is more like a liaison report. So Mr. Franco and I uh, attended the um, civics classes at the high school, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with Ms. Foyle um, and Haley, I'm not sure, I don't remember her last name. And this one was more of the presentation that I know um, the town manager also participated in, as well as Representative Kushmerik on a different day. 
Um, and I believe we also had um, our, one of our police officers also participated, Representative Cena. So this was part of their civics um, education where we went and we just presented information. Really, it was more personal. Why were we engaged in, in, in politics? Um, you know, what our motivations were. They also had some questions for us. And it really was a really helpful time. That's where this, all the skate park <laughs> kids were there as well. Uh, and it was three classes. I thought we had a great time. Uh, and then we also went to uh, eighth grade classes, all of the eighth grade civil, well, I think three of the eighth grade civics classes with Lisa and uh, LeBlanc. And that was last week. And that was more of a targeted kind of focused discussion on what the town, how the town government is structured. And uh, Lou and I presented that, how the town government is structured and what the select board does. Um, and that was part of their civics education. So thought that went extremely well. Um, we got um, thanks from the, both the teachers, superintendent. So thought it was very well received by the students as well. And the second one is um, we also had yesterday a meeting of the Lunenburg Municipal Building Design Committee. Uh, and it was, it really was a great meeting, I'm going to say. So it was about two hours long and it was a brainstorming in which we were taking the new charge and kind of figuring out what these what the milestones need to be to get to a finish line and as a i think we were generally all in consensus that the first step in this process is to take a look at town hall and ritter building and to do a detailed review of vertex report tap pace studies to identify what was needed to come up with a list of what work has already happened and then what remains and that once we have that information, then we can better understand the programming that could go into either of these buildings. Uh, and then, and so what I expect then is, is that that's where the next phase of this is going, is like I said, a more detailed review of these buildings, uh, again, Town Hall Ritter. And I think the, the focus is TCP, but I think before we can, before, before we get back to it, I think we need to figure out costs and requirements um, of these buildings so we can really maximize their usage uh, in the long run. So that seems to be, I think, a really positive way of trying to approach this. And, uh, and so our next meeting will occur in two weeks on March the 21st. And there we will uh, begin this review, but we've also invited some members of the former Building Reuse Committee um, to come and speak with us to share some of their insight as well. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, FinCom, the last two weeks, they're, they're meeting now every week. Uh, last week it was presentation of budgets from the public safety building, so the, from the police and fire. Was there any? No, oh, that was it. the only two, right? Mm -hmm. And the week before that was a, a, uh, a fairly long meeting. Some of it, a lot of it had to do with our, fi or Mr. Dunnitz's pr final presentation of 30 School Street, that was a long discussion about how that should happen, and that led to other discussions about buildings, et cetera, in general, um, and then lay out how they were going to go around budget season. So uh, their next meeting is Thursday. It's gotten reduced. Monty Tech was supposed to present, but they cannot because the presenter had a death in the family, so that got postponed and the only one is the DPW director yes so that's DPW six so it's for six o'clock mm -hmm. they plan to be done by 730 for those people who want to go to the APDC meeting across the street uh, okay review of the tax lien sale list <coughs> so did everybody have an opportunity to look at this Yes. Yep. And it got severely reduced because I guess there was that's a good thing. Yes. So there was So in reviewing I had questions about three properties there and to to that end I still have the same issue with those three properties. So the two on Hollis Road and the one on 56 Car Ave I personally would like to see removed from the the lien list. I have a. I agree with you. I have a question on that. Um, previously, my understanding is that the I thought the town had moved to foreclose on these properties. I thought that's what we also discussed last time. Is that accurate, um, town manager? No. Yeah, I don't think we've ever voted to foreclose. Mm -hmm. We could 
foreclose. Okay. You start foreclosing proceedings. I it's not an overnight thing. Not previous. Yeah. Really. Oh, I, I, okay. Because I, I would be in favor of, of removing them from the list, but only if we're going to then initiate a foreclosure action. Well, I, I think would. we should consider that. I don't know, know that they're hand in hand. Uh, and I should be specific, actually. I, I, the thir 356 Hollis Road is not one that I'm, uh, I, that's not necessary for me to be removed. But the 250 Hollis Road and the 56 Car Ave uh, is the bulk of that. That's 30, 30 acres. And I know there's a big sign out trying to sell this property for big money, and I don't think anybody should be given away to get because of lean, a lien sale. So we should just leave it and decide if we want to decide, you know, decide if we want to proceed with for foreclosure from the town. And I see they're yellow. Does that mean this, these are the ones that? Those are the ones that open space identified. Right. So I'm in. The, I'm in complete. I'm the 110. Holes. The 110 Pleasant Street. Um, 101, 101 Pleasant Street, I apologize. Mm -hmm. So if you live on 110 Pleasant Street, it's not your property. <laughs> 101 Pleasant Street. Uh, I could also get behind taking that off the list. So I, I, in, in reality, to make it easy, I support the open spaces request to remove those four properties. Well, they also have Sunset Ave, and that, that's probably my question. Uh, I don't know exactly where is where is that. I don't oh, think there's no Sunset, Sunset Ave. No, it's not on there anymore. anymore. Yeah. 14 Sunset Ave. Yeah. Uh, it's not on. It's not highlighted in yellow. It's not highlighted anymore. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's 250 and 356 Hollis Road, 56 Car Ave, and 101 Pleasant Street are the four properties that they would like to see removed. All right. I think I was looking in the folder that's in in our drive that says tax. Um, Tax lien sale and open space list, and that's where. I was oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Okay, yeah. I get it. And they have a corresponding letter, uh, actually. Mrs. Bertram, is just logging on, so. And she wrote the letter. So. The open space letter. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm in favor of uh, of removing. Uh, 56 car, 250 hall is 101 pleasant. And what was the fourth one? 250, 356, 250 Hollis Road. 356. Yeah, right. the, the top one. Well, not, there's yeah. a list on the bottom right 101 there. Pleasant is They're the fourth one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I see we have Ms. Bertram from the Open Space Committee. Would you like to speak? Um, I don't know that there's a need for me to speak. It sounds like... Um, you guys are in favor. The open space did submit a letter, which I'm hoping that you have an opportunity to do. Um, but in that letter, we talk about the reasons why we support the um, removal of these from the tax lien list. Um, these properties are in a very densely densely populated area of Lunenburg that could benefit from uh, open space. And the property at 356 currently has a baseball field that was in use for many years prior to the closure of the business. Uh, one of the things that's identified in the open space is the importance of um, additional park space, especially in that area. Um, so these are areas that we're talking about close to the Fitchburg line and the Whalen area were already identified in the open space plan as areas that needed additional open space and additional park. Um, so all we're asking at this point is to remove them from the tax mean list um, and then discuss, you know, whether we move forward, whether the town is forward with foreclosure or funding to improve the properties so the open space, if we get your approval to remove them from the tax mean list. Or, or if you remove them, then we would move forward with trying to find funding to um, either, you know, acquire the properties or improve the properties. Yep. Well, first steps first, I think, yes. I, I think uh, I and I think, well, I don't want to speak for anybody else. I'm in, I'm in concurrence with the, li the, the four properties requested to be removed. I will let the other members speak and if they feel that way or not. So. Uh, I, I'll, I'll address this too. I found the memorandum of the open space ad hoc committee persuasive and that uh, for the reasons stated therein I support removal of the four properties discussed uh, without preconditions. <laughs> I'll support removal. Yep. So I would entertain, 
I was going to comment. I do support the removal, but not necessarily for open space purposes. Well, that's why I said first step first. So <laughs> yes. This is just, this agenda item is just for taking these off. Whatever your reasons are, are secondary yeah. to that. Yep. Okay. So I would entertain a motion that we remove the four identified properties and for the list that is 356 Hollis Road, 250 Hollis Road, 56 Car Ave, and 101 Pleasant Street. Remove them from the tax lien sale list. Tax lien sale to occur on uh, March 17th. 17th. So moved. Second. Well, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. So it is removed, and these can go to my lien without those four. Okay. And this will, this is the final? Yes. We okay. Yes. All right. Just want to make sure she knows that. So. Yep. And thank her for all her hard work in putting this together. And, you know, again, I think she's made great progress in getting those ones off the list, first of all, by getting agreements. And then these four we'll deal with separately. Okay, discussion of the, f I'm assuming it's fiscal year 2023. I hope it's not a fiscal T or 2023. Capital plan, financial forecast, annual town meeting, or, or one article. So the, I do have one thing that I want to bring up to the board that I talked to the town manager in addition to the town meeting warrant article. We, we talked, I believe it was either in special town meeting in the fall or our annual town meeting last year came up that people wanted to get the 300th anniversary committee together to start planning that for, for uh, 2028, which is uh, six years from now. And I said we, it was my intent to put it on this year, so we are gonna put it on uh, to formulate, form that committee start out with some, I, I asked the town manager to look at 275th, whatever article that was back uh, 25 years ago, and just put a similar article and give them a modest budget to start working with, and at least get that, you know, give them six years to prepare that celebration. So that's the only addition mm -hmm. that I had. And I put a draft article on the draft warrant for the board to, to vote on the very towards the very end Q for that article yep so to have to determine you know what a reasonable sum of money is back yeah, to start. Back then, it was three hundred dollars. So yeah, maybe, um, maybe a thousand. Or <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it's more than that. I mean, no, well, this is just a start. It's a start. Yeah, we have, come we back. have five years. <laughs> yeah, they come build back build for up. more. This would probably be for communication and a couple thousand dollars just to you know to paperwork and mm -hmm. stuffing envelopes and mailing and whatever. Just yeah. okay. Uh, any other questions or discussion points on either the budget, the capital plan, we have an update on the capital plan from the town manager's report, financial forecast, or the annual town meeting article, anybody else? No, okay. uh, I was gonna just thank you to the town manager. I do like the article R, I think that's the appropriate approach. Well, that's the next one, yep. So the next one is discussion on annual town meeting warrant articles for 30 School Street. Um, So I don't know if we want to, do we want to divide this into two articles or put this into one article? Um, it's up to the board. So the hazardous materials is in the capital plan for that. This article um, for the demolition, yeah, it might might be advisable to split it. Yeah, it's split it two. because the, the demolition one is going to be prerequisite that we have they're the both final funding approval. articles right. but, um, but we need the approval of the APDC or we have to have another article that is gonna uh, depending on what they do mm -hmm. we have to have some other method that makes it legal right now we can't just demolish it because it's in the process of being reviewed so I want to not logger jam it I'd rather just have the design one first because we can go ahead with the design without the demolition 
I think I, I'm. I think the. I'd like to see both personally, but I, mean. I think that even. I mean, I don't know if the APDC has anything really to do with the article because I think that that's separate. That you know, the town appropriating funding for something, there's still a process to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think the town can still appropriate the funding, and and we can go through the process afterwards, or or we'll be in the process, or. Right, but it'll be two separate money things, and I'd rather separate the money for the design and separate it in a different article than the money for the demolition. Because they may want to go ahead with the design and say, you know what, let's wait on the demolition because maybe, maybe we don't build what after the design or something. I, I mean, people may want to do that. I'd like to see both pass, yeah. but at least if they're separate, you can get one pass without the other without having to go through amendments and everything. I, I, I would, I would, my counter to that is that lumping them together it is an action uh, tied into a follow-up action and I think that you know that's what I think is is a healthy combination of we're gonna tear down a building and then we're also taking the next step to be able to develop the land mm -hmm. and and I don't think we should take the risk of one of those not passing um, because you know essentially why spend more money developing and design if the town does it says no to demolishing a building or you know or vice versa so I, I would like to see them lumped I uh, together that would be my preference it's the vice versa that scares me mm. that, 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 that they vote to approve the design the money for the design but then don't vote to demolish so but uh, uh, voting to dem in other words there's arguments in favor of coupling these and decoupling them uh, certainly uh, a vote to demolish uh, uh, could stand alone without a vote to approve design but a design a vote to design without demolishing doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense so sure, sure. Uh, I'll be devil's advocate. Sure, it does. I mean, I just don't, I'm not sure I want to give the money now to demolish it. I'm not. I may not be ambivalent about demolishing it. I just don't want to approve the money now. I want to see the final design and the final costs. What mm, difference? Yeah. I mean, but whenever you have a demolition, you're going to have to develop a demolition plan. So rather than say appropriate the money for the demolition of the building, how about appropriate the money to develop the demolition plans of the old primary school? That's fine. I, I didn't know. I didn't know that was a step that we need to do. That I mean, because demolition you, is going to be bid separately. Right. So you're going to have to have plans for the demolition because there's a lot that's going to go into it. There's going to be abatement. There's going to be other things that go into demo of that building. So we have to develop plans for that. So why don't we get started on developing demo plans? No, that that could be an argument to keep them coupled because essentially, if this you know, final engineering and design services, you know, I I don't know if that's completely separate from, you know, demolition plans because that's essentially how we, we can, we get can it. De develop develop the plans in concert, the the park plans and then the the demo plans and right, then get them separately. Parallel. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just do them in parallel. Right. But the point is that you could. I mean, I, I didn't know we needed to have. Plans. I've never seen anything where we did plans, a separate article for plans for demolition, but we haven't done a lot of demolition in town. We've really only done the high school is the only one. But I if we know, appropriate the you know, funding the and the purpose is, is demolition, I mean, I, I think that in that process that we could still, you know, I'm sure within a year's time we could develop those plans with that funding and then demolish the building and then find ourselves in a position, you know, a year later in which we now have these final design plans to then present to the town. But I think, I, I think the benefit of coupling them is to tear down the building. <laughs> it's never going to cost less today than, you know, never going to cost less than it does right now. Uh, I'm not, I'm not married to either one. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a strong stand. I just, they, they seem to be two separate votes to me in my mind, but in, in, I understand what you're saying and that's fine. I, I'll, I'll defer to what the rest of the board wants to do with them. Unfortunately, your pushback made sense. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you can go ahead. You you can go ahead with the designing the new thing. And yeah, right, the, right, the, right. The, the down. But to, if Todd, again, I don't have any experience with us demolishing a building in town um, as a separate article. So, so for example, so, when we did the the middle high school, yeah, the de demolition plans were developed for that, but they were part of the the overall plan set. Right. So mm -hmm. typically, that's what happens when you're replacing a municipal building. You tear it down and you're replacing it with some else so in your plan set your your demo plans are, are part of it okay so but there you go so that because we're separating it because we want to separate it just because 
that may be the best way to do it for the way we have our monies allotted for this maybe we want to delay the, the construction of you know the you know the open space uh, park uh, so it makes sense to develop demolition plans but I think we need to do that and I, I think but if they're plans yeah if they're plans then I think this should be then I agree with Michael then it should be one then we're just we're developing we'll have a project that has two plans in it the project I agree design. well and, and my understanding from um, Mr. Dunnitz is that their uh, his firm along with his partners I, I think it was Vertex they're going to engage them to develop those plans mm -hmm. okay so yeah I, I would just reword it that it's to develop dem demolition and, and uh, uh, development plans for the site sure. no I, I see the the merits of both and how town meeting could vote um, either way I also think you know if you combine them there's always the option that the motion can be amended within the scope of the article if right. that's going that way yep. so okay so let's stay with one then yeah I think that's we're not we're not voting to demolish the building we're voting to put plans together yeah right. as well as plans for the whole thing so at the end of it however and hopefully that's less than a six I think, I think we are I think we are voting to demolish yeah <laughs> no, no yeah no we're I not agree with uh, again, that it's a plan. It's a demo demolition plan. Well, a as for the demolition, I, I agree with Mike Ray. I think the APDC, based on their delay, has forfeited their right to weigh in on this. I think by their inaction, that they took action, and we now have the right to demolish the building if, if yeah, I don't approved by the town meeting. Well, we always had the right to approve it by town. So let's let's just see how this meeting goes, but. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, the article is asking for funding to demolish the building. Right. It's not authorizing the, the demolition. You still have to go through the process yeah. for that. Right. So right. But the demolition plans is going to be a small portion of the demolition costs. I think it all should be one. Demolition plans, yes, demolition so costs and disposal of the building. So basically it's plans to everything that's going to happen there. Right. And, 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 and actually tearing the building yeah, down. Yeah, and tearing the building down. Plans and tearing the building down. It's demolish, including the plans to demolish, and then plans for uh, the park that's going to happen afterwards. It's both. And I think combining them allows you to... But she's saying that it's not authorizing the town to demolish it yet. It's, auth it's authorizing the funding right. for it. Right. So... Right. There's still a parallel process that's being followed, right. with the APDC. but it's giving the town the funding available to yes. carry it out. So if they were, if they were to approve it, we could do it right away if it passed right after that. If it's not, then we'd have to go back to town meeting um, and ask permission from the town at that point. So, but we still have the money. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think right. we're and and if there's savings on one, we can apply it to the other without mm -hmm. another appropriation. Yep. So. To discuss costs, though, related to that article, and I've we identified. Talk with Ray. Yeah, yep, I've already um, reached out to, and I've been back and forth with him today on it. Um, the um, demolition, he estimates we should do 150. Identified in his estimate was about 112 around there for the demolition costs, but that. Um, the contingency funds would be everything that would be related to any of the permitting like for him to attend any meetings any of those related cost um, to get the demolition um, part permitted um, and the uh, design, design costs um, the what was in the estimate was very conservative so but even giving a seven percent design fee um, he thinks we should budget 300000 for that portion of the, con that brings us to construction documents. Okay. So, and that's, um, but I'll fine tune that number, but that's the ballpark is 450 and all. And these, both of these numbers were the numbers that were include not in addition to, but were inclusive in his final number, right? So these would be numbers from the, that presentation. Yeah, I guess if you could extrapolate like them from that estimate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't line item detail. No, on no, that. I know that, the but I mean, it was incorporating costs. the whole cost. That, right. That 4.1 million 
in, this is part of that. So, yes. Okay. And we do still have a, a small amount, about 10,500 remaining from the original appropriation for the design. So that can be applied okay, towards it's a small amount. But yeah, I think that, mm -hmm. that, that article makes sense. Okay. Do you want me to review the other articles? If you'd like. Okay. Uh, quickly, a lot of these are standard articles, so written, uh, to hear reports from town officers, committees is always standard. That will be part of the consent calendar. The revolving funds article, we always have to authorize the spending limits for those revolving funds. The um, payment of prior year Expenses. I know we have one um, identified prior year expense, so that will be included. The amending the current year, fiscal years, fiscal 22's budget. The first year costs, which is fiscal 22 for the clerical uh, collective bargaining agreement. The fiscal 23 capital plan, that funding. The omnibus budget for fiscal 23. Is G, the stabilization fund article, the special purpose stabilization fund article, the OPEB trust fund article, the budget for the solid waste disposal enterprise, the water enterprise is L, M is the public educational government PEG, their enterprise budget for fiscal 23. N was an article submitted by the Cemetery Commission for appropriation of 10,000 from the sale of cemetery lots. O is the uh, reorganization article that's required to separate out facilities from the Department of Public Works as required by the Charter. And P is uh, the funding article that I referenced earlier in the meaning for the Woodruff property. For the NOI? Uh, yes, to carry out the work. Work of the NOI. The, yes. Okay, yeah. cool. And that's all so far. I'm still expecting um, probably three articles from the personnel committee. Um, they did a full review of the bylaw. Uh, another one for the, it's uh, the three year uh, review for the compensation plan for the, under the SAP and a third one for some positions that are that were approved that need to be added to the grid. The sewer s still needs to submit articles and um, that's all at this time. Excellent. Any other questions? Okay, select board MRPC representative and a school committee liaison. So can anybody do either of these two? I will put my name as school committee liaison at least through the election period until we have a full board again. So I will try my best I'm to you know listen to their meetings and be the liaison so there is a point person at least that they can come to but I cannot do the MRPC because their meetings are in the middle of the day and I yeah. cannot attend how, how, how just study how often is the school committee twice a month right twice a month all right On, I think Wednesdays yep Wednesday evenings yeah I don't I can't do the other one I was gonna <laughs> offer to do that one but I think I thought oh, you can you want to do the school I was choosing it just so they'd have somebody to go to if they need to. If you want to do it, that's fine with me. Regardless, this would only be until May anyway, no matter who does it, right? Yeah. Well, we'll yeah, we'll, re, we'll yeah. reorganize, and so the new person, whoever that person will be, will have some assignments. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Okay. Uh, so we don't have any MRPC. Just, just let me, uh, uh, just because I'm not in sync with what their schedule is. is so uh, just look at just look at LunenburgMA.gov oh, no, no, on no, the I'm calendar. If tomorrow is one of those nights, yeah. but it I, is. Uh, I it believe is they do have a meeting tomorrow. <laughs> I would like to discuss the upcoming meeting schedule. Uh, okay, upcoming meeting schedule. Uh, first of all, we have the 
APDC hearing for a certificate to alter application for the 30 School Street building, as we've talked about a couple times. Uh, that's uh, on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. at the Ritter building. So I, I like to discuss that. I, I'm based on my public comments earlier. I do believe that the APDC has, has offered a constructive approval by their inability to react um, to the application that was filed uh, in a timely manner. I understand that even, even by their own rules, they have five days to respond with whether or not an application is complete or incomplete, and they didn't do that um, either time that we submitted an application. And, you know, so, I mean, aside from kind of the outrageousness of, of what I mentioned earlier, you know, I think it's really just, you know, this is common I, in zoning. It's common when, 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 when boards don't act within time frames that are given. And I think the bylaws are pretty clear and rigid um, that 45 days to within that time to hold a public, within 45 days that the board shall have that meeting. There's other words in there. And then there's also the expectation that the decision will be wrapped up within 90 days. That, I mean, we're just not in that timeline. And, and so I'm, I'm willing to claim constructive approval uh, for the demolition of, of the building at 30 School Street. I appreciate that argument, but whenever there's a bold uh, proposal like that, I always have to invite hearing a counter argument. So if there's a counter argument, let's hear it. <laughs> First of all, I don't think it's clear. I think our own town council had, you know, had made points about how he thought that their own procedures may have overstepped the bylaw, but it's certainly not clear cut and indicative that it, that it was true. But more importantly, I'm not looking, and I've said this all along, I'm not looking to pick an antagonistic fight with the APDC. I really am not, and while I, offered in your absence the equivalent statement and fellow members will remember I offered the equivalent statement that your recap during public comment was tonight I offered that several weeks ago as well so I'm not happy with the way it does it, but I'm not going to supersede them uh, in in this kind of especially since it's two days away I'd much rather them have the hearing and come up with a conclusion we're not looking to tear down the thing tomorrow anyway and we have Recourse. We have ways to go, and again, I'm just not looking to be antagonistic in imprinting the, the a select board's decision upon them because of their actions thus far. I'm just not at that point to do that. I, again, I'm equally not happy with the way they did it, but I don't want to get to that end. The the end that you're proposing is not an end that I'm ready to get to uh, at this current stage. It's certainly not. I don't know if you want to comment, Todd. Well, I, as I said earlier, I, I support your position. I agree. But I think if we're going to challenge another board's authority, I think we have to do it unanimously. And if we're not going to do it unanimously, then I think we just have the hearing on Thursday. Uh, I, I fully support your position. I, I think we should um, tell the APDC, have a nice day. Um, thank you for your service. And, and we'll, we'll go on our way. and. and do what we want just based on uh, their um, delay uh, but the hearing is the Thursday and we don't want to look like we're running over the other boards in town even if they behave poorly so I can certainly see that perspective and then unless like I said unless we're going to be a unanimous board in this decision I don't think we should move forward with with it I oh. Um, well, okay, that, let, procedurally, let's just examine this for a minute. If, hypothetically, uh, there would otherwise be a unanimous vote, in other words, if I voted to go with uh, uh, Mr. Jeffries and Mr. Dwyer, would the chair be willing to abstain so that the vote would still be unanimous, or would you put in an opposing vote to it? <laughs> <laughs> I would put an opposing vote to it. Right. I, I think it is bad policy uh, in this case. Again, I, I, uh, I want to agree with the facts that I think they did misbehave uh, and they did act outside of the scope, whether intentionally or not. It certainly has that feel to it. As far as the, the Mr. Jeffries 
uh, assertion that they are acting not in good faith and it's not going to be impartial, they have been telling us what their position was because we've asked them for a long time. So what they put on social media did, did not come or should not have come as any surprise to anybody. I don't agree, and I think the use of social media in this regard is a poor use, but we did ask them what they felt about this, and they did tell us that given their reading of the bylaw, how they would vote. So now I think we just give them the opportunity to vote that. Maybe they'll change their mind. I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't hold stock in either one. I want them to go through the process. I think the process is what's important, and I don't want to to punish a commission uh, as a commission, not the individuals who m comprise it, but as a body. I think we have to hold a little bit sacred, maybe too strong a word, but we have to hold the the importance of independent bodies making the decisions that they're made, that they're asked to make. And I don't think it's clear that they they didn't act accordingly. I think the bylaw needs to be revisited, and I think the town council has said so, that it really should be clarified what constitutes a complete application, and it has to be clear. It just can't be nebulous, and you don't have to tell anybody, or things like that. So with those things in mind, I think we should let the thing play its course. And again, we're not looking to knock down the building tomorrow. We have recourse since then. And uh, I think I, I think tonight that I would be in favor here of, of two motions. One um, being to require unanimous voting threshold for the motion that will come after it. And the second one to be a vote to um, a motion to constructively claim that, the, um, that they've granted approval. But this, uh, that I article, would, that I would expect that second vote to fail because right. we're only going to get three votes. <laughs> but I think it sends the message that I think we ought to be sending is that when you don't do things the right way, that it's just not okay. It's just not okay. Um, and and while I would have preferred for this process to be, you know, go through the public hearing as as we should have, you know, get a denial or approval as we should have, that instead what you have is a board because of their views, well, whatever the reason is, a board being unable in this circumstance uh, to complete all their requirements in the timeline. And granted that they've given themselves, even though, the, even though our bylaw says application submittal, they've inserted the word complete, um, and then they've also given themselves a rule, like I said, of five days after submittal, they need to decide if it's complete or not. They took 31 days. <laughs> so I, I think that we need I'm in favor of, 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 of symbolically doing this, uh, even if it doesn't result. But I do agree. I think that may be the fair comment. Well, I think this is the more important comment. The more important comment is that this is not an agenda item to take votes on. So we did, they are, there's nobody notification that we were going to take a vote on whether we would do this. So I think any motion is out of order because it's not on the agenda to discuss this. There's no agenda item to suit, you know, say by unanimous consent or otherwise that by their actions they they've given you know implicit you know approval to the project well what strikes me as funny is this is almost the opposite situation to conrad's where we have one of our own boards who it's been so poor at communication you can read into it something nefarious that they're doing it on purpose or just ineptitude that they've you know been completely uh, dropping the ball in terms of processing yes. an application yes. and that's concerning from the standpoint of is this what everyone who submits application goes through and I think there are ways and I, I and I hear you 100% I think there are ways to correct that down the line I'm not going to discuss them publicly at this point but there are ways to address those you know, procedures and policies Agreed. is the one I'll say up, up front because I think that their own procedures and policies are maybe in conflict with the bylaw and that's what town council said yes. and that has to be remedied by itself but there are other things too Lou, so, you like you were to say something. so so let me just clarify you are not uh, willing to treat this as a topic reasonably anticipated by the chair uh, <laughs> for tonight's no, meeting. No, it, it would have to be. It would have to be listed, and it would be contested. Okay. And again, for a meeting that's going to happen in two days anyway. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's going to be continued. I don't know what anybody's going to say. I'll be at that meeting. I intend to be at that meeting. I will 
I will present the board's position as the one who signed the, the uh, request to alter to begin with. And you know, uh, our votes and our discussions as a board have been very open and transparent and frequent, as it were, over the years. So, you know. Yeah, I, I will. Um I just want to also add that I, I, while I don't necessarily sign on to, uh, to use a legal term, the dicta that was in uh, Michael Ray's, uh, Mr. Jeffries' open uh, public comment, in other words, alleging bad faith and all of that, I, I don't even think we need to do that just, just to, to take the position, and I, know, I realize we're not taking a vote, but to take the position that I'm taking on a matter of principle. I just think that there had to be the non-compliance with their own bylaws that there was, uh, with the bylaws that there was. It didn't. Ha it doesn't matter what the motivation was. There was just non-compliance. So I, I, I certainly will concede that as 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 you know, Mr. Alonzo is our chair. That it is completely his call as to whether or not we can vote on this or not. And and I I can accept what you say. I, although I may not personally agree, uh, I think it is your call. But I think tonight the message is still clear that three of us are in the same, I think, wavelength that, that this process that we've just gone through is problematic and is no, not no. the way That's it unanimous. Okay. <laughs> there is not three. Uh, that is unanimous. I am just not willing to go the extra step and say, you know what, the decision is made, your lack of action has made a decision de facto because of your inaction. That I'm not willing to do that. But everything else up to that point, I am in okay. complete concurrence with the rest of you. All right. So. Um, and I think a wise person once said that reasonable people can disagree. That's what I've heard. <laughs> and others have said it as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Two things related to that um, as an action item. Do you want to discuss a possible warrant article to address the APDC bylaw? Yes, let's put it in as a placeholder, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And second, I've received various emails over the past uh, week plus, last two weeks, about the location. And as I've uh, relayed to these individuals, including the people that are on the APDC, it's not the select board or the town manager that determines the location of the public hearing. That is the board's determination. I tried to assist them in um, because this meeting room is being used by the finance committee Thursday night, as it is during budget season for the every Thursday, um, and the PAC can only live broadcast one meeting at a time. Um, they can't do two, um, so offering suggestions. But they met last week. Uh, as, a, as a board, APDC, and decided to re keep that location. Um, they, after consulting with council, they could have, uh, if given proper notice, um, posting uh, the agenda, they'd open up uh, their meeting at one location and uh, uh, move to another location and giving people sufficient time to get to an alternative location if they showed up at the original location, um, but that was their choice to uh, keep it at that location. So I just want to make that and they, clear. And they have not even added a and Zoom capability, right? Right. So then they don't even have a Zoom meeting going, so you have to show up in person. In the Ritter, in the Ritter room. Out of curiosity, is anyone going to this? I'm yes. not. I am going to. Okay. As a, I'm going to try and go. Yeah. All right. yeah. I as will a, be attending it as well. Okay. So. And if you can mm -hmm. forward to me the copy of the application because I didn't make a copy of the Xerox of it myself. It was a hard copy that I wrote the app, you know the request. So That's all in the Google Drive oh. under <coughs> 30 School Street. Okay, all right. Thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Lou, I checked the uh, calendar. There is not a school committee meeting tomorrow night, so it's <laughs> my <Sorry>. error. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that would have been. I would have already missed my first meeting tomorrow. <laughs> so. March 15th is uh, next Tuesday is our meeting. I am out. I just got told I have to travel for business on March 22nd. So okay. um, is that the, the warrant closes the day before, right? Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's fine. All right. So I'll just be gone for that meeting. 
And do we have any public comment from the public? No one present. Any public comment from the board? None. None. No. I want to thank everyone and wish everybody a good evening. And as always, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. See you next Tuesday. Good night. Recording stopped. So authoritative. <laughs> <laughs> Recording stopped. stopped. <laughs> Recording in process. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. So